just start start this thing oh and still look at that still the cpu is just so maxed out hey it's, it is what it is i mean you are worth it right <laughs> all right so uh, let me just check whether or not it can be seen on this oh actually it shouldn't be here right yeah it shouldn't be here all right so my, so my guess it's it's all good what about your task manager you try your task manager see what's running it's well the task manager would be definitely showing at least the software yeah yeah all right anyway okay i have the uh recordings separately still it's a stream and a, and a recording so cool yeah so for all those watching and then who will be watching in the future uh eric is probably one of those few people in the world who you meet and say damn what I, what have i done with my life uh you have been to riga how many times or latvia rather how many times i don't know i i would just make a wild guess and say maybe 20 times mm -hmm all right easily so do you have any opinions whether or not uh, during those 20 times let's say uh your opinion of of riga latvia has changed in in some way or or not um i know a lot of the financial like the economic history and what's been going on here that i tell me know. about it that i do know uh the difficult times that they had in the in the 2000s and then uh, later on uh, oh, sorry, in the, in the late 1990s and then the 2000s, how everything got better and better. Mm -hmm. And they did, they did pretty well with the, uh, the, the, the uh, self-imposed austerity, and which actually worked out pretty well. But the people here, it's not like it's something really new for them. So that's probably why it worked out very well here, but it didn't work out in Greece. Have you, well, I mean, look, there's a challenge for me. If I ask, have you done something? You probably have already. <laughs> so I might skip that. Uh, so what, are, what is your comparison? Let's say you've been to Latvia many times. What is your comparison in, in your view? Uh, how do we stand in the world as uh, well? You can start off as an economy, as a society, all the good stuff. <laughs> I don't think most people know um, anything about Latvia. I think if sure. I go to North America, sure. um, I, yeah, I do actually have one, one memory of where I saw the name Latvia when I was young. Hmm? It was, uh, I think it was a Spider-Man comic. For real? And there's Doctor Doom. Remember Doctor Doom was the guy with that metal... Let me the, just check it. He was the guy with the metal mask and really? like the green cape. He was uh, Doctor Doom. All right. And, and he, was, he came from Latvia. Are you, are you real? Yeah, yeah, Doctor Doom. <laughs> Doctor Doom came from Latvia? Yeah, he, came, he was... Uh, who I made that stuff up? The, um, Stan Lee, probably, the, uh, the, the, the guy who, who did all the Spider-Man stuff. That, that's the Doom. There he is. That's Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom. Um, all right, Doctor Doom. Is that, is that the one who throws those pumpkins? Uh, or not? Oh, I think that's the, uh, that's the Joker, isn't it? No, no, no. The one, no? the one in the first Tobey Maguire movie who throws that pumpkin oh, I uh, don't know. bomb. Um, I don't know if that's him or not. Oh, no. Look at that. He's from Latveria. Oh, Latveria. Oh, okay, okay. Same well, way. you know what? All it's that time, a, I, th a, I, th I, th I thought it was, it was Latvia. How about that? It's, it's a fictional nation. Latveria. Oh, there it is. Oh, somewhere me. around Hungary. <laughs> somewhere in, in the east of Europe where nobody yeah, has cause, an idea. Because I guess yeah, those, those are the ones. Created by Stan Lee. There it is. Yeah. So. Latveria. Stanley, yeah, yeah. Oh, the currency, Latvian franc. Francs, okay. You guys have a, a nice Latvian. romantic Yeah, we don't, we don't produce the uh, uh, villains, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so so you you clearly have uh, noticed that nobody knows where Latvia or Latveria is. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't even think you know if people know the difference between both, you know, or that there is one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that. Yeah. So uh, yes, I, I'm, I could I could probably write in Facebook right now in my status. I am in Riga, hmm. Latveria, and just see how many people Good actually actually respond to that. And I should put a couple pictures. So you know, exotic. I'll put the Blackheads house, and then I'll put like Doctor Doom, and just see if anybody <laughs> notices. <laughs> I could do that. Yes, I'm here in Latveria, and it's a. Uh, there's a guy throwing explosive pumpkins at me, but it's all good. They got good food. <laughs> they got the great desserts. Great pumpkin pie. <laughs> That's right. Oh, bread soup. Red so soup. so uh what what's the what's the time span for for all your visits to Latvia? 
What, what was your, when was your first time? My first time was in the mid 2000s, I think. Mid 2000s, so, I, sp I suppose you saw just a lot of new wealth. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of, a lot of stuff flaunting. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the influence of the Noveruski and uh, <laughs> a lot of right. that. But I saw that also. I was spending a lot of time in the, uh, the uh, ex-Soviet countries and it's very different. So I was spending a lot of time in the Ukraine. All right. And uh, so I would often transit here, actually, which is how it started. I started flying Air Baltic and the big investments they were making in the airlines and all those things back then. Yeah. Uh, where not all of them really worked out. So For sure. I, uh, I flew with them actually quite a bit. Um, and as a result, I also tra uh, transited here several times. Mm -hmm. And I would make sure if I took a transit, I said, well, if I'm going through there anyways, yeah. instead of staying three hours, why not stay three days? And that's usually how I, I, uh, I, that's usually what I do with all my transits. So at that time, you were still um, most of the time traveling just for, f well, not for bigger experiences, but as, as, as a fun, fun trip yeah. in a way. My trips are still fun. <laughs> yeah, well, that, well, that's what I, what I wanted to get into. So yeah. now you told me you don't really, well, that's your lifestyle. It's it's not re tourism anymore for you, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and now it's now it's pretty much just just uh, just what I do all the time. Um, I I feel like I don't need a home. I I, I spent several years traveling. I, I've always traveled since since my. Well, since I was very young, when I was a when I was a kid, we used to go back and forth between the family in the old country, and then visit family in Europe and and then uh, in the Middle East and stuff, mm -hmm. and then we would go back to Canada. Um, so, so, what did your parents do to actually provide you the opportunity to travel to that much? Um, that my, early? my parents were teachers. My parents were teachers when it's we. Sounds we, suspicious we, to me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, they were teachers before. Um, my father used to work with the Israeli Secret Service. Um, but then he left everything in the 70s and then we mm -hmm. went to Canada. And I was very young and we went to Canada. I knew nothing about this until yeah. I ended up reading a book about my father um, in, my thir in my 30s. Um, I had a few hints that were, that were coming in, some little clues that were coming up. I started asking family members and then sure enough, uh, one of them said, here. And then I read a book, a book, and my eyes just went like a biography, biography or um, something like that. More like a like a like a history thing about about what my father did, specifically um, your father, specifically him, and and people like him also. So he's he was he was mentioned specifically because he was the head of one uh, specific area. You mean as a director or something? Like that? Um, yeah, of a of a um, for a, there were, there was a big a big um, movement of Jews towards uh, Israel in the in the 60s and 70s and for one for one of the main regions my father was was the head of that oh so he was well sort of establishing new ground um, yeah and so he had to go to old communities and he was pretty much uh, uh, getting people out organizing it uh, for them to go because this is also a time where you needed exit visas you still needed exit visas in certain countries not just where now for example you need a visa to go to russia all right you need an entry visa but back then to leave a country you also needed an exit visa just like there used to be when this was the soviet union as well you yeah. know and they used to have it also in eastern eastern uh, other other parts of the iron curtain like like uh, eastern germany and stuff mm -hmm. you needed a visa to actually leave the country and so back then a lot of countries where there were still a lot of jews hundreds of thousands of them um my father organized so that the let's say the border guards would just turn I always, I always wondered how they actually could establish who is a Jew and who's not. How do you do that? Because uh, I, th I thought the, the argument was, well, it's just a religion. Because uh, didn't they have uh, somewhere that they wanted to put in passports that is a Jew? And then they protested, well, no, how would you determine who is a Jew, who is not a Jew? It's just a religion. Uh, well, strictly speaking, if your mother's Jewish, you're Jewish. But how, well... And then you determine that your and that your mother is Jewish because her mother was Jewish. Pretty much, I mean. So, I, I mean, so who is the original Jewish people well, person? If you needed to have it, uh, I, I guess, uh, I guess that would be uh, um, who, who was the first? Who was it? I guess uh, Ur in the city of Ur. Um, wouldn't it be? Uh, um, but wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. The. Um, uh, a lot of this is linked with with culture, of course. So if anybody mm -hmm. goes up, uh, knows all the Jewish prayer stuff, and is, comes from a Jewish community, and then goes to a rabbi and says, "I need a, cer a certification that I am Jewish," mm -hmm. then I'm sure the rabbi would say he, he'd, he'd figure out pretty quickly if, if you were or not. If I went to an imam and said, "Hey, I'm Muslim," he'd look at me and he go, 
tell me a couple of things, tell me this, where'd you grow up, what's this and that, and your family? And I tell him, and he'd probably go, hmm, I don't know, it doesn't sound kosher. Good pun. Um, so so I, I, I don't think it's a, um, something that you can prove just um, you can, uh, with a piece you, of paper. You cannot take a citizenship on that one. Uh, you, right. mean for, you mean for Israel? No, for, for I mean Jewish as a as a uh, yeah as all, a all Jews all Jews. Well, no, you can't take a citizenship, but every Jew has has a right to Israeli citizenship. So well, see what the, that's what I mean. So Israeli citizenship would mean you are a citizen of Israel, right? That's right. Right. So so Jewish is just a distinction for religion. In this case, and yes. And ethnicity, but sort of sort of a mixed. Bit of, a bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, see, that's the thing. It's it isn't just one thing. It's the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, so to speak. So there, there's a, there's a, there are several things. I mean, let's say, for example, uh, I know somebody who has, I, I know a family in which the father is Jewish, but he said, I want a Jewish household. And he married a non-Jewish woman. He said, okay, but we can have kids, but I want a Jewish household. And uh, It sounds cultural. It just sounds that, cultural. I mean, essentially, that's all, that's all that religion is, really. Religion really sure. is just culture. Sure. Because in the end, that's what it is. And then again, if if somebody... When you strip the belief part from yeah, it. Yeah, especially. if somebody would just go and say, well, I identify as a Jew, mm. probably the, the traditional ones would say, no, 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 you're not one. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you have a lot of... You have a lot of uh, 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 the Catholics who say the Protestants aren't Christians and vice versa. Probably. Probably. So, I'm know, not sure. You have I'm some Orthodox sure. also saying, saying, well, the Catholics aren't... I'm not sure Real whether ones. or not they had ever any well debates about who gets in or who gets out. Well, in a way, because 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 that's what I was always wondering. Well, how? All right, they they made Israel. So mm. how did they know who was to be the 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 person who gets the benefits from that one? How do you determine that one? Yeah, um, it's it's more of a because um, because let's say you. Uh, Let's say for the past century you were living in uh, Russia. Your fa whole family were in Russia. Yeah, I would say, well, you're Russian then. It's just you are Russian. You are just Russian. Yeah, technically you'd be right. But but then some people also, on a technicality, they said, hang on, the mother of his mother of his mother of his mother of his mother is Jewish. So technically you could say the person is Jewish. I don't know if it, how liberal or conservative the rabbi would have to be for him to say, well, you are Jewish, or we'd have to perhaps recertify yeah, you. Yes, well, it was the certification you know? that will be. Um, or you wouldn't need to be technically converted, but again, if somebody can convert to Judaism, um, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think all religion is rubbish, and every and all religion is cultural. Yeah, it's it, definitely. It, they're all cultural things. It's definitely you know? the, the identity part of culture. But but then some people actually say, say well, I want to be able to, do, to, to define that, and you're trying to, to define something uh, metaphysical, um, and bring it in with with a culture. You have you have some some uh, Muslims saying, well, they're not real Muslims. They're do you Shia or they're Sunni or they're whatever. They're not real or they're Yazidis. You know, they're not real Muslims. And do do you? I know I know there's some, some Muslims do some that. tension between them, but other than that, is it really based on the the realness of things? Uh, for some people, yeah. Some people are more devout. Um, I know some people who also say to me, they say, well, look at you. You got tattoos and you don't eat kosher and you're not a real Jew. And I say, should you have, and not, I say, should you have no tattoos no, and eat kosher? You're not supposed to have markings and you're supposed to be religious and follow God's laws. Um, and uh, so I've had people say to me, also family members say to me, say, well, you're not, you're not Jewish. And my answer to them is whatever floats your boat, whatever you like. <laughs> if, that makes, if that makes you feel good saying that, you can say it 10 times over and over again yeah but why would uh, somebody from your family say that what, what would be the intent um probably to feel to better about himself sh shame, or herself. shame you um shaming i think it's it's more about uh proving somebody somebody else someone's own purity saying well no i'm a real jew and i know that and again the whole judgment thing comes in i say well hang on if only God can judge, then how come you're doing that? But that's what you have people doing anyways. They're judging you based on what they believe is, the, is their interpretation of God's law, so, God's will. So, all right. Basically, you have seen, except Antarctica, right? Because it's not mm -hmm. that entertaining to you. It's not a country. And it's not a country. Yeah. You have seen, well, sort of all, at least UN members, Yeah. right? Uh, do you mean actually the... 
well i suppose you mean all of the what what is the 192 or sort of 193 yeah. the members 190, of the UN. so what are UN the members. rest who are not the rest that are independent yeah. um one is you probably have seen all fifa members or something like that <laughs> yeah. right um I don't even know, actually. I'm not a big on football. Um, there's 100, what is it? I think there's 197 or something like that because the de facto independent ones. One is uh, Pridnistrova between, between Moldova and Ukraine. Another right. one is Taiwan because they have their own money. They have their own political system. Um, one is the, U uh, no, um, the Vatican. And one is um, what they call Palestine. Hmm. So... Um, you know, in the West Bank and all that stuff. Yep. Uh, so those are the other four on top of the 193. Those are the ones that are de facto independent. Um, Technically, you could say at least for Palestine, you, you just you just say, well, I've been to Israel and that's it, right? Well, there are certain parts of it which are the, the what people call the occupied territories. But it's still the West in Bank. the same territory, isn't it? Um, but they are still, they're still actually demarcated and split. They still are. All right. So but you have, you have Arabs. Uh, sorry, you have Muslims and Jews. I shouldn't say Arabs because there are Jewish Arabs and Christian Arabs and Muslim Arabs. Um, Jewish Arabs? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it starts getting confusing, man. Oh no, no. Well, well I mean, there are the a lot Jewish of Jewish Arabs. There's loads. I thought yeah. the Arabs uh, are supposed to be Muslim. No, not at all. Actually, um, that's one problem they, that they have uh, in in uh, or one issue that they have right now in in Egypt, for example. Some of the original original. Christians, what they call the Coptic Christians, right. are from Egypt. I mean, Christianity started in Syria, and they still had. When I was last in Syria, I went to see all the all the Christian sites, and there were a lot right. of Syrian Arab Christians. They all have a lot also in uh, in Iraq. Also, there are many many in Iraq. Does that mean they are Catholic? Um, no, they're uh, it's 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 a very early form of Christianity. That's all why right. it's called Coptic. It's just a very early form. I mean, there. are how many different denominations denominations of Christianity? There's about something like twelve thousand. Yeah, that's yeah. There's over just over twelve thousand different denominations of Christianity: Presbyterian, Anglican, and then even you go under that into subdivisions. So yeah. you, can, you can you can really go deep in there. Um, but uh, yeah, so there are also also the um, uh, yeah um, Lebanese. The Lebanese, for example, it's it's actually is written in their constitution that the prime minister. Um, must be a Christian, and so you have For real? yeah. So that's why um, now they have Haridi. Um, well, well, before that they had the great uh, Rafik Haridi, All right. who was Lebanese, who was a Maronite Christian, which is what they call the Church of uh, the, the Christian Church in, Leb uh, in Lebanon. So it and he was an Arab. So is it fair to say that the Arabs have their own version of cr Christendom? Um, of Christianity, Christianity, yeah. Well, they, I mean, yeah. Sort of the, sort of the Armenians, sort of the Greek, sort of the Georgians. Wouldn't would it be possible sort of the to compare the Greeks to at least to the Russians? Mm, it's still different. I mean, even the Armenian is still quite, still quite similar. But I mean, there, there are differences. Yeah. So you have uh, everybody says, well, no, we should do things like this. We should do things like that. All right, so, so I mean, you have a lot of small differences so, as sort well. Of everybody has their antiquated uh, beliefs. So, sort of, but yeah, what religion has the better. best food? Uh, uh, it would have to be a religion where you don't fast because I hate a day where you can't eat. Well, but that <laughs> makes the t food taste even better, right? Afterwards. Oh, that's what they say, but I don't know. I find I find sleeping is uh, enough of a break. I wake up hungry and I just can't <laughs> eat. So, I do a lot of I do a lot of sports, so I get hungry. So, so do you, when you when you for instance go to a country, do you specifically want to? Uh, let's say experience the culture as a as a regular person meaning oh if a regular person usually does this eats that i would like to try that as well yeah yeah um uh, I'm, I'm kind of past that point a little bit um yeah. I, did, I i dealt a lot with food when i first started traveling and when i didn't know some of the languages of the places where i was that would be yeah a great place to start it is because food is is usually the most accessible part of um any culture because you may not know the language, you may not know the traditions and the and the habits and things, but everybody has to eat um, more than once a day, so you will be have you will have an immediate um, encounter uh, or interaction with the culture, and that's usually the food because somebody can come and speak to you and yeah, you don't know what to do, or they may make hand motions at you or a certain kind of handshake even, no, and you just don't know what the hell is going on. But when you eat, then you know what it is and you know how it tastes. And so what, what was the closest thing to Maize Zupa? Um, Maize Zupa, there's a, 
there are some some kind of um, Christmas puddings that they have like that in in uh, in England, and there are some some bread puddings. But my zuppa is just good because it's got those those spices in there, the spices and the and the um, yeah bread soup. That's I think awesome. you could, I think it would be great in advertising, man. I really think because. <laughs> Because I've I have never even looked at miser zuppa twice, right? But uh, when you say it, it's like maybe I should just take take some miser zuppa. It's good shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good stuff. Have you well? You told me that you wrote those uh, jingles and you've uh, worked commercially mu- musically, right? When it comes to selling products. Yeah. So are you actually sort of a version of of um, a real commercial musician, or do you just uh, or did you just do that for to pay the bills? Um, I, I like making music, so I've written all kinds of stuff, the advertising jingles. Um, I mean, if you give me a guitar and I sit down myself, I'll start doing some more complicated stuff mm-hmm. because I'm just deep into music because it's, it's what I've done since I was five years old. So how did you get started when you were five years old? I picked up my brother's guitars. My brothers are all at least 10 years older than I am. And uh, I was... Basically, you have... Uh, how many brothers? I have three brothers, no right. sisters. So we're four boys. So you had productive parents. Uh, reproductive parents, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and then uh, uh, ten years later, I came along, and there I was, and I said, okay. Uh, my brothers were older; they had guitars, and I said, well, can I play your guitars? And they were like, yeah, whatever. It was the '70s. Mm-hmm. When I was a little kid, but they were they were teenagers in the '70s, and yeah. and they had guitars because if you had guitars, you were cool. You mean acoustic guitars? Um, acoustic, electric, also electric bass and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, they'd have girls over, and the girls would see guitars, and be like, oh, you play guitar? And they'd be like, yeah, baby. Come here, you know, and, for then, sure, uh, for sure. and they didn't actually play for them. It was more for show, I think, because um, uh, I never really saw my brothers actually play guitar. And me, I was a little kid. I was interested. I wasn't interested in girls yet. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that the guitars um, would actually help me get girls. Um, so it wasn't any of my motivation. Um, uh, it does work, um, sure. but I only figured that out later on. <laughs> and um, I picked up the guitars and I started playing. And that's it. I we well, we had it little sounds keyboards. too simplistic when you say just well. I picked up a girl and started playing. I, I, did, I started did anybody slow. did anybody teach you show you something? No, no, what? no, no what? lessons. What? And we didn't even have YouTube back what? then. We had no damn YouTube. And with YouTube nowadays, there's so much information, so much instructional in, uh, information uh, available for free. It's fabulous. It's a great time to learn. You know. So how did you? Let's say all right, you By picked ear. up the Qatar. What? I learned by ear. I picked it up by ear, and then I sometimes I'd, I, I'd watch people do little things. I'd pick little things up here and there. I, then one day I found out how to do guitar chords, mm-hmm. um, and then I found out more guitar chords and more. Um, I would borrow books off friends or get them from the, li- from the library. At some and point... And it's still when you were six or seven? Um, no, this is, this is up, to, up to my teenage years. And then when I was, uh, I guess, about 13 or 14, by then I was, I was playing, playing. Um, and then I really got serious into it by the time I was about... 15 or 16, I was in bands. Mm-hmm. Um, I went and I played for all kinds of people. And that um, was in uh, Canada? That was in Canada, yeah. Um, and I got on some uh, uh, some larger... I had some larger shows. I got to play like my hometown arena when I was, uh, I guess, about... Uh, yeah, just uh, just out of my teenage years when I was twenty, and that was my big break kind of thing. That was my my uh, that was that was the first time I'd really been been on a big stage where some of the big bands had played that I had seen and stuff like that. When I was play played with some other people. Um, later on, I went to Germany uh, for university and left everything. So, which decade are we talking now? Uh, this is the nineties. Nineties. This is the nineties. So after after the wall came down. After the wall came down, I went. came over. All right. Yeah, yeah. I said, oh, look, there's space. I can come over and I'm going to walk through here, walk through this rubble. And so, then, uh, <laughs> so what did you think of uh, of uh, Germany in the early 90s then? Um, it seemed very peaceful to me. And, and I thought, wow, everything's so serene and peaceful. And I, it was probably because I didn't understand the language. Uh, I think that has a lot to do with it because people just wouldn't talk to me or they talked a little bit to me. I wouldn't understand. I'd shrug my shoulders. And then they'd go, okay, whatever. Um, I ended up, I was in a, in a small city when I first went there. Um, I had to learn German that first year, and I guess the first thing, the first thing that impressed me the most about Germany, was how people actually took time um, to not work. What in North America, you take time, you say, "I got to work, I got to work, got to do something," mm-hmm. so you work overtime. And in Germany, people say, "No, no, 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 it's five p.m. That's it, it's over." 
And oh, so yeah, so I'm going just home. Abiding the rules, then they buy by the rules, but they also use use their free time, and they they value their free time. And they take a lot of the free time. I was shocked at first that stores were not open on Sunday. Yeah, that that that's true. Yeah, that's, and that's, that is not and, so and, well, pleasant. Was, that's right. Yeah. So when I first arrived in Germany, um, and on weekdays stores were open until 6 p.m., and Thursdays was a long day, and on Saturdays stores would be open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's it. And I thought, well, what do people do if, you know, they can't work? And I understood people actually go spend time with friends. People spend time with families. And that started to make sense to me. And I thought, wow. I mean, I'd come from North America where you're supposed to do everything for career and show you're working hard and stuff. Um, Even and in Canada? In Canada, yeah. People work a lot in Canada. Like, like, in, uh, like in, in, in the United States where people are always working. At least in Canada, you get something for it and you have a certain social safety net and, and, and all that stuff because you know because you know what uh, well i would say just an impression was for me that canada is just the right mix of of english capitalism and french culture yeah oh yeah yeah but Can anybody when you say that they like to work hard then wow it's not as so. bad as as a uh, as uh, some people have it in the u.s but mm -hmm. they're still very career oriented how that should be the main thing in your life your cv is is pretty much everything and one thing i like about germany is that it, that's it's not everything uh, there's a there's a a big focus on or a big emphasis sorry on free time on uh, and in german you know how it is in german they have a, they love to describe it in, in very technical things one is called arbeit mm -hmm. work and the other one is called freizeit yeah. free time and it's so there's freizeit and arbeit and there you know when the clock strikes five you're out of there doors you know you, you, yeah that, that's when you lock you pull the door shut at 459 you just wait and then you shut it at five but your work's all done because the germans i mean they are um they are actually um what is it uh the way they work is 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 very efficient also they put in the man hours well actually they put in less hours than greece for example that was one thing uh, the greece you mean the, the, the greek week? that's right yeah the, um, the greek actually worked more hours statistically than the germans but the germans get more done in those in the short number of hours um germany that they has work. less than 40 hours per week right um no i think they have 40 hours but really? uh, but uh, on average and if you look at the productivity uh, compared to the number of hours worked germans work less but get more done than the greeks who work a lot more 36 mm, or something like that i i don't know i've never worked a full-time job or a real job. <laughs> I've been a musician all my life. But what would you say that it's a, one is a real job and one is not? I mean, you, you still produced something. That's true. That's true. I, I, I lived all my life. Uh, uh, and and uh, yeah. Creating and producing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's being creative is, fa is fabulous. You know, when you actually make a living from being creative, it's, 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 a, it's a dream come true. Have you, uh, have you met any uh, well-known, let's say, artists in Germany? Um, German ones? Or, yeah, or, German ones. Uh, yeah, lots. Lots. I know lots. I was writing today with one. Um, yeah, all kinds. Sure, that's just the 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 environment I'm in. Um, so you are. So yeah, when you go, to, let's say, to to Germany as a student, you are not necessarily uh, thinking about twenty years ahead, right? You just go there f to study. How do you actually? How did you decide to go to specifically Germany? Um, I met a girl who told me that. Uh, to come and to come to Germany with her, she had been she had done an exchange in Canada, and she said, "Come to was Germany." Was she blonde? Uh, yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> and and uh, she said she said, "Come to Germany," and I, I said, uh, "Well, I can. I got to study." And she says, "Well, you can study in Germany. It's free." And I said, "Free?" Mm -hmm. I said, "I don't have a European passport. It won't be free for me." She said, "Oh, it's free for everybody." I said, "Are you sure?" She said, "Yeah, of course. My mom has something to do with the university. Her mom has some kind of administrative function or." Uh, position at the university and I said what I can't be and uh, sure enough I checked it out and it was true and this is the early 90s before there was internet before, yeah so looking up this information meant a phone call or asking people to translate from German there was no Google Translate I mean uh, it, it was when when you had to work to get information um, instead of just pulling out your phone and <laughs> and asking Siri yeah um, we uh, yeah, so we ended up uh, staying together because I went to to uh, to live with her and and study in Germany. Our relationship didn't last very long, um, but I stayed in Germany for uh, for quite a while. Wait a second, that was that was the start of you staying in Germany. That was me leaving North America and coming to Europe. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's uh, all because of a German girl. Well, I was looking to to leave. Damn, you're shallow. Um. You're shallow. <laughs> 
It's, well, because she's German or because she's a girl? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very picky as long as it's a girl. <laughs> no, um, the, the uh, um, let me think, uh, in, in Germany, uh, Germany's a fabulous place to live. Germany's a great place to live. But also, to go back, the thing is, I was also waiting, or I was looking for a way to leave Canada. What? I why? don't know why, why, but I was just, I remember coming back when I was 18. I came back from one trip to Israel, visiting my family there. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I came back to Canada and I just thought, uh, I want to go. So I started calling up like the Peace Corps and a lot of, a lot of these aid organizations. I said, hey, I, I'm willing to do something. Do you need somebody to come to? I mean, I knew nothing. Hmm. I said, uh, go to Africa and, and you know, you need me to dig a well or something. I had no idea that people in Africa worked, <laughs> actually work a lot harder than, than, than I ever had known to in Canada. Um, what? Why? Why yeah. are you saying that? Uh, cause, That's not cause, cause the stereotypical when, knowledge. Uh, well, when it comes to physical physical work in North America, where or in the in in let's say the richer countries, we're a little bit uh, we're a bit spoiled. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, so it's so just, it's just a process efficiency. Um, well, also, that that I I mean, I was a I was a little kid who had never gotten his hands dirty. I was I was uh, 18 years old and I'd never really done anything. You know, I didn't grow up in a in a in a in a close family situation like you would in some uh, some places that I've seen in Africa. I mean, I, well, I mean, Africa is a completely different place on its own. It's an amazing place where the people have a real sense of community and therefore they're um, they're also more willing to provide for each other and able be to there for each other. And I I, and I hadn't learned that in Canada because that's not something that you learn that early at that at, at that age in North America. Because you have a lot of things provided for you. Are you able to differentiate between, let's say, North Africa and South Africa? Oh, absolutely. In yeah. between, absolutely. West Africa, East Africa, Central Africa. Because the funny thing I heard, at least about Liberia, was that it was made, in a way, specifically for freed slaves. Yeah, that's why they called it Liberia. Yeah, um, and, and the funny, the irony of it is, it's not necessarily that good, of a country, right? Uh, well. What do you define by good? I mean, ec- I you mean know, economically the speaking, pros- the prosperity wasn't necessarily the they had a, they had a, achieved. A, it wasn't achieved. Uh, a lot of places in the area had a lot of stability issues, civil wars and stuff like that. Uh, Guinea um, is you know has problems with with uh, uh, even in, in infrastructure. Go to Guinea, you know. Go to Guinea Bissau, even right next to it, or down when you go down and you you, you go Sierra Leone, think, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. We, we, we We'll get pretty soon into conspiracy theories. Oh no! <laughs> just, 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 just because. Uh, have you heard the the statement that uh, the southern the southern countries mine it, the the eastern countries, uh, what what's it called? Well, produce it. Pro- process. Uh, yeah, process it, uh-huh. and the western countries uh, consume it. Um, you mean globalization? Well, yeah, in the sense that somebody is is the benefactor of, of the system and somebody is the so, sort of loser. Well, they're yeah. not necessarily losers if, they have, if, if it provides work and, and uh, opportunity for people. Yeah, but how, how safe is that work many times? Well, what's the alternative? See, that's what I w- wanted to talk about. Yeah. Because in a sense, you could just say, well, why wouldn't we, let's say, protest the system? I mm-hmm. mean, them in Africa, for instance. Protest yeah. the system, just consume our own, right? Produce for ourselves. But we may not have it. Wait, what, what do you mean? We, don't um, we may not have... Um, well, also, no, you mean also the know-how or the resources? Because um, the resources are mostly... Either or, or both. Also, also both. Uh, let me give you an example. A lot of people talk about um, what happens in China. They call them sweatshops, where they make the Apple factories. Yeah, for sure. Nike... All, um, all those big co- Actually, they're not companies, in China. Right? They're not in China anymore. They were in Vietnam for quite a while. Um, and uh, some of them have gone over to, over to Thailand, some of, some of those places. They should be all over. Um, right. Well, uh, they go to usually where, where it's cheapest. They go to where it's cheapest. Now, now one thing is um, a lot of the stuff, first of all, let's get started with, all right. with here. A lot of stuff cannot stay, cannot be here. If you have people in manufacturing jobs here, at some point, they will, I mean, that's what happened here. That's a, the, the big thing they have in the U.S. right now where they say, Ma, I used to work in a factory. My daddy worked in the factory. And okay, well, oh, what, you what you if somebody wants there, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, nice one. I, I I lived there for twenty years, <laughs> so my daddy worked in this factory, boy. <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and then uh, I, I, and, and they want to work. I really imagined you in a pickup truck right now. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, if the, if the shoe fits. 
um, so a lot of that is not going to work because there is going to be at some point development. You will learn certain skills from working in that factory. Sure. Somebody may have an idea, may say, I want, you know, assuming he has access to capital markets, that's another story altogether. Um, then he may say, I want to start something. He'll pick up skills from that. He will be generally, we hope that our children, you know, you'll pay for your children's education with your factory job. Well, what's your, what's your son going to do? Is he supposed to work in a factory? Or are all your kids going to work in an, on an industrial level and a lot of this has to do with the nature of work you've been to germany i think that's the case many times isn't it yes but there's also a um a germany actually differentiates a lot and germany has a high have a high level of expertise in the services for example and uh, now they do a lot of industrial manufacturing but they do it on such a high level that it's stuff that china cannot do for example china in uh, uh I, i'm going to generalize but sure. generally generally the machinery that that they have in the factories that the factories have Where do the factories buy their machines? They buy Germany. them from Germany. Yeah. Germany is so specialized at that, and now that there's a big fa a manufacturing boom because a lot of being a lot of it has been outsourced to some of these countries, um, to a lot of let's say lower economic uh, level countries, uh, that um, there's been a big boom of them because people really realized, oh, gee, we can actually make this stuff in Bangladesh, we can make it in Thailand, we can make it in whatever. Look at uh, Taiwan. Taiwan, everything used to be made in Taiwan in the in the 80s. That was Now, where we see made in China, everything's made in China. Well, back then that was Taiwan. Taiwan had a lot of um, small to medium sized en uh, um, enterprises, most of them family owned, uh, or a large part family owned, I don't know about most. Um, and they m now they make um, computer memory and microchips. They didn't have that know-how. That know-how came gradually as the, as the factories came in. And don't forget, there's also um, a certain amount of modernization, Uh, and investment in infrastructure. For example, if you want to, if you, let's say, let's take, say, Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh uh, is doing a lot of the garment uh, stuff, a lot of the clothes, mm. clothing manufacturing. Um, if you go to these places and you say, okay, I want to start a factory. Well, what happens if the place has electricity that shuts down three times a day? You as a business owner, you're going to say, well, hang on. I can't, I can't get shit done here. Um, so that puts a certain amount of pressure And that means you require a certain amount of services. If the government is really interested in their people in getting that foreign investment, then they're going to actually create that. You can have a decent water system. You can have a decent sewer system, toilets, running water, electricity, so that it's reliable, so that people can actually make a living, people can actually invest. Because they know that if they invest in that country, if H&M gets their clothing made in, in uh, Bangladesh, that, that um, they can actually reliably take an order and fulfill that order and then, and then deliver it and ship it. And that's one thing. Um, now you get to the workers. Um, if the workers, if there's no foreign investment coming from outside of the country, those workers will be stuck Well, look at the case of China. People used to, it was a very agricultural um, based society. So most people lived on the farm. Yeah, and as, then. Yeah, as was the case all over the world. Right? That's right. That's point. right. Well, I mean, uh, same thing. If we didn't have that evolution of the nature of work and of, of, of society and technology, then, I mean, 300 years ago, 95% of people here worked on farms. Now, how many people work, work in farming? In Germany, it's less, less than 2%. So uh, there is a, an evolution of the nature of work. You mean really nature of work or just the mechanics of work? Well, it's not just the mechanics. I mean, there's, there's also technological developments, but some of that comes from the right things being in place. If you live on a farm, you're not going to invent an iPhone, but you, there's a gradual way up until you get there, you know? If you invent fire or the wheel, you're not going to invent an iPhone the next day or the next year. Well, you have to come up with engineering, you have to come up with stuff, but in order to have this, you need to have a foundation in order to learn stuff, well, in order to develop case, other you, things. You won't uh, necessarily produce it, but you still could imagine it. But you won't be able to actually actually think Execute of it. Execute it, yeah, sure. Well, somebody's going to have to. For it. And in, in, this, in this case, it happened that um, uh, Europe was the one where a lot of that, a lot of that te uh, technological stuff really took place. Um, a lot of technical uh, advancement came in place because they were they were liberated from tradition uh, slash religion, um, and and uh, they understood. And um, Europe was the first place that was globalized. Where did the Black Death come from, and why did smallpox not kill people here? But when they went over to North America, that they they decimated, literally decimated. One from ten was left alive from the from the North American Indians, from the Native Indians. Um, so. Actually, and South American. So, 
Um, you this, know, this, because, one of those, this one of those arguments I like to make as well, because if somebody needs to know history, mm -hmm. then it's preferably you just know at least the last 200 years and it'll, it'll be good in a way that, all right, you, you know everything you need to know to just navigate the, the current system. Yeah. Other than that, it seems to me uh, it was just king war, king war, then some clash between tribes. And then before yeah. that is just stone stones and nothing else sure sure yeah and with, but then certain certain factors came there was a synergy of certain factors that came into europe and that actually made it possible for capital markets uh, intellectual development oh actually and transport what do you what do you like think that. now because in a way all right the industrial revolution brought us the manufacturing that's right the, yeah. the, the, the we're we past that now yeah sure yeah and nowadays the, with the information technology being what it is the communication infrastructure being what it is mm -hmm. would you be let's say comfortable to say we are in the midst of uh, another sort of revolution because it uh, i mean what what iphone is what 10 years old yeah yeah that's right yeah so a smartphone is not that old right and it has com all, sort of so in some aspects changed the uh, everyday life of i don't know how billion how many billions of people and absolutely. it will continue to change absolutely because yeah, because yeah. i suppose not even half of the population of the world have smartphones Something like that, right? A lot, a lot do. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised, actually, yeah. Because, because I thought that was the one argument they made for why sh should somebody go into creating apps, mm -hmm. just because the market ha has not been uh, actually that well, much cornered yet, because well, so many people, people don't have any a lot of smartphones. Okay, well, a lot of electronic services are available on smartphones. If you look at in Kenya, they have a system called M-Pesa, which is a mobile banking system, which is just done by sending credit just through a, a, a phone, heard, yeah. which, which is not even a smartphone. Those are still the old dumb phones, mm. and they actually send money just with a dumb phone. Can you believe that? Just connect it to your SIM, and that's it. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty advanced, and that's completely mobile. As without a smartphone. Also, some people have, have said, well, instead of developing apps, a lot of people have um, also said, let's develop a cheap smartphone. So I couch surfed. Cheap smartphone. Cheap smartphone. You can get them. Oh, some you mean a smartphone just smartphone for a small just, price? Just, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, It's not that powerful, but it does just enough really for some for that, some people. Right? Yeah, exactly. There are some you can even get them for, for 30 or 40 euros in some cases. I, um, I remember one guy I couch surfed with in Africa who really had, had nothing. He didn't even have enough money to actually get credit for internet on his phone, mm -hmm. but he had this real cheap ass smartphone yep. and he went to the kebab place on the corner and he got onto couch surfing with his really shitty phone. It was because uh, they had Wi-Fi. Yep. And he went there, and he and he was able to administer all his, all his invitations and all his guests and stuff. And people were coming on couch surfing, and I came up to his place, and I mean, I was there with the goats, and uh, you know, and um, the shower was you know that hole in the wall, and he'd bring he'd bring water from the well, and and it was as as primitive as you you would imagine it uh, uh, to be. But I mean, this was the guy's life, and he was fine, and I mean. I don't want to say primitive in a bad way because the guy wasn't stupid or anything like that. He's just that's just the life he had, you know. And it was and I had a great time. I had a great time. And the guy's super nice, and I still have him on Facebook, and I still talk to him on his uh, shitty, really cheap smartphone. But so, so but it, it does it, you know. And that's a, that's an example of a guy who doesn't pay for internet, just has a a really simple smartphone, and some of the possibilities you can have with that. But you made a point in a way, but mm -hmm. because can you imagine what's the what's the feeling of? you actually tapping into the modern technology, you actually see what's going on in the world, mm. and yet when you turn off your smartphone, you are back in the Middle Ages. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Today I took the train here, and I bought the ticket on, uh, uh, on my, uh, using the app, the mm -hmm. Latvian, Latvian train app. Uh -huh. And I thought, well, that's great. I did everything just now, boom, 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 type in numbers, credit card, all this stuff, yep. bought a ticket, great. And... Um, and using that, I went to somewhere and came back and I thought, oh, I need my phone. Otherwise, I don't have my ticket. I don't have a ticket anymore. I got my phone. If the battery dies, I do that for my, for my, uh, I did that for my German train tickets as well. Everything in the app. It's great. It's a, it's a, it's a lot more useful. Um, but I don't think their smartphone itself is a revolution. I think it's a minor revolution. What? I don't think, I think, I think it's a minor. Uh, so what would be a major revolution? IT. Because what it is, is it's a miniaturization of a computer. Oh, you mean the computing power? That's right, that's right. The IT revolution, the idea of indexing something mm -hmm. um, by ones and zeros as opposed to having, you know, now everything's indexable. That's what really the power of a computer is. All right. Um, and, and now you can, uh, you know, you put a hashtag on something and then Wait, you, so you can, you, you you can find it instead of looking through a, pic, a picture or, or you, your photo you albums. Do you mean the power is actually not in uh, communicating but in data 
creation and collecting? Well, I mean, what is a computer? Information technology. It's, uh, it, it takes a lot of information, it can process it, which means you can also search for it, which means you can also cross-reference it. You know, of course you can do calculations with it, but the calculations are actually a lot of the ser searching and in indexing and processing and stuff like that. Hmm. So that's that's uh, um, that's essentially I mean what you do with a computer, and now so we use it to make videos. I would have guessed, and we digitize everything in, yeah, order to, yeah. in order to do that. That's why it's all just numbers, and the numbers get indexed. And I would have guessed it. that the primary function is to actually exchange information. Well, I have sort of sort of you can say, well, the primary function is to actually process information. Well, I have a friend, and he, and he he uses the internet and computer just for porn, and that for him, that's the he's hit for him. It's still exchange of information, isn't it? Um, I think it's pretty much just one way, but <laughs> but I mean, I get that counts I too. Mean, but for him, that's the primary function of, of of computers and internet nowadays. Yeah. But good for him uh, or her. You still consume <laughs> information. Yeah, but the point is the information technology. The fact that everything is, is, has been digitized and transferred into a it, into a. a, a computer processable form mm -hmm. um, including music including video um, is, uh, is is fabulous that is the revolution and I think the um, the smartphone or iPhone or whatever you want to call it I think that's just again that's just a, a, a one step in all of that because the IT revolution itself is a large thing because I mean your, your smartphone is nothing new it's just a computer that that has a phone in it sure look you at know, it small. look at it this way if the smart home wouldn't be here, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have even that kind of, uh, let's say, video sharing and uh, all all the rest, right? Well, you'd have a, um, you'd have a, maybe you'd have a tablet. I mean, the tablet is a, sure? is, is a is a smart sure? is a smartphone without a phone, right? Just well, a, it's a large it's smartphone a big, without it's a, a big phone. phone. But, but many of them have but SIM doesn't card. Yeah, but it doesn't necessarily have a, have a have a phone part. It may have a SIM card for data. Do you see what I mean? It's just it's it's the computer part that I'm talking about, and they've taken all that and just put it into your phone. So now everybody has their phone, which is more about the computer part. I mean, we actually don't use it as much for calling True. as we do for all the other smartphone or computer stuff. Yeah, which yeah. is fine. Which is which is uh, I'm not, I mean I'm certainly not putting that down or saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying um, the revolution itself I think is not the phone. I think it's actually the whole IT thing, and now we've that's extended now into what we call a phone, although we don't phone very much with it. So do you agree with my statement that actually we should elect only IT people in government? <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, uh, why? Uh, well, I think you should elect IT people for IT roles. <laughs> But have you ever met a dumb IT person? You definitely can see some uh, lazy people in IT. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I'm not saying that. But people dumb in a sense that they are not able to think. Um, I've, I used to do a lot of code, uh, coding and programming myself. So for what I wrote administrative software. Uh, I co-wrote lots of software when I was a teenager as well. Oh man, that was back in the day, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember Fortran? Remember, remember C plus? Remember, remember Cobol? Machine language. Um, I, I did a lot of that stuff. I I did a lot of. Uh, I, I I wrote commercial software. So yeah, it was yeah, yeah, commercially. Yeah. That's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stuff that was sold and used. Mm -hmm. um, um, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think that IT uh, being an IT person actually necessarily excludes anything else, you know, or that so it that's what I'm saying. I mean, look at look at it this way: if you would elect uh, only IT people as presidents, would you expect the or, or, or prime ministers or any any sort of? I would make a terrible president, man. I'd be a horrible president. You? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Why would you? You speak how many languages? More than five, that's for sure, right? Yeah. 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 You speak more than five languages. You've you've seen the whole world basically. Yeah. Right, and you can think, and you are knowledgeable. Therefore, I am. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I suppose that would be the. But I don't know you if you fulfill I all the criteria for a president. Well, you even have some tattoos, which which attracts even some some hipsters or some <laughs> some stuff like that. I get so. my beard grow. Okay. Um, I, I, uh, well, no. I, I mean, politics. You need uh, politics. You need somebody who knows how to run a country. What the administration nobody of a does. country needs. We, we all know that nobody does. Nobody is born with it. Nobody. Well, I mean, there are, there are it. certain advisors who know that you need this for infrastructure, water, um, banking I mean, reg regulations, for sure, for sure. Uh, environmental stuff. But you so can do that. A lot right? of this stuff go, uh, um, ha has to do with that. Let's try to get elected. Right, I'm 20, not a specialist 20, in any of those things. Twenty twenty in though. some some place, yeah, exactly. <laughs> for president. Liberia. Hey, we're talking about Liberia. You know, <laughs> I'm going to go to Monrovia. Actually, I've been to the. I've been to the to the. No, I didn't go in 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 Monrovia. I didn't I? I did went. To, I did go to Monrovia, the capital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I didn't. I didn't go to the the, the parliament there. I went to the pri to the parliament in Sierra Leone. Actually, there I I uh, actually walked in as a, I went as a guest. 
Um, but uh, no, I don't think I'd make a I'd make a good a good president. Um, also, I, th- I think this attitude uh, exclusively qualifies you to be a great president. Well, I, that, I, that belief, mm, I'm not that good. But the thing I is, need to, I still need to be humble. I, yeah, that, that would definitely be good. But the person would ha- also have to want to do the job. So I think, uh, you know, you know, it would be horrible if I if I went to do the job and I lost interest in it, and then I suddenly just that's mm, probably not mm, uh, that's know. probably not possible. Imagine yeah. they would tell you, well, you, it means you need to travel, you need to l- meet a lot of new people. And you I need to focus on certain and you to, things. And, that and sometimes you need to entertain people. Can you do that? Uh, well, yeah, but I, I don't know if the presidents, I mean, I mean, uh, in the United States right now, they have a president who's a clown, so he's entertaining people. Why, why do you say so? Why, why, why do you feel Donald Trump is a clown? Um, <laughs> oh, I, I have no idea. I have no idea how but I can But he's entertaining. You've got to give it to him. Oh, sure. But he's... But he's, but he's, a, he's just he br- brought the attention back to american politics all over the world yeah by destroying it <laughs> yeah do you fine. really think that i mean i, I know yeah. i know americans and maybe all north americans are quite critically about their politicians when it comes to representing them all over the world but i think most of the world looks at a dude and says oh he's he's alpha chimp right and um, that's it that's about it if he, I don't think if poli- got, politicians if, do because if he is, has the non-verbal uh, le- uh, communication as yeah. I'm I'm the boss yeah that's it I mean I think most of the but that most may work for the United States the, the problem is he's isolating himself from a lot of other countries and, and and the thing is I mean the fact is the United States has has had a leading role in a lot of important institutions post-war institutions and and they were a leading figure uh, wait a second we are getting back to the yeah. conspiracies because i thought jews are, are all responsible for <laughs> that everybody what says everybody says there's, there's a book and i'm supposed to be in charge and i just i keep waiting for my for my for for you know for for, for my pay um <laughs> i keep waiting for that um uh, no, there's a, there's a. I mean, the United States actually has played a, a, a very important role in setting standards, uh, monetary standards. They started the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the World Bank, the IMF. Um, the UN um, was, was, um, wasn't just them. I mean, the British had a, had a big part in that, but I mean, um, it was a very Western-led thing, and the, and the United States really, really d- being the only remaining superpower. Um, they made a lot of mistakes, um, but uh, overall, they um, it's I, th- I think it's better w- with them than without them. A lot of th- I mean, there's a lot of U.S. hate, a lot of anti-American hate um, that I that I pick up, which started w- off with um, the whole George Bush invading Iraq thing, which um, was a terrible decision, obviously, and um, that's probably what started the United States down the whole downward path the overreaction to the uh, to the uh, the events of uh, September 11th that's what started them off on that on that path um, because they were the only remaining superpower they could afford to make mistakes and they sure did but at the same time um, you kind of need that there's a uh, the political scientist uh, Ian Bremmer um, I've heard of him okay uh, um, I know I only know Brzezinski oh yeah of course yeah Polish guy yeah, Kissinger Chris. yes 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, well Kissinger Brzezinski uh, <laughs> like this, uh, Kissinger. A lot of people say, "Well, he's just a war criminal because he went for politics, and at the expense of people people's lives," um, which he kind of did. Um, but isn't that Brzezinski was global was politics was, just inevitable? Mm, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have but to be. But can you show me somewhere where you don't have to crack some eggs to make an omelet? Um, well, I mean, th- there there's the the constitutional uh, dilemma that they have in Germany. They say, "What if there's a a terrorist on a plane who's hijacked it Mm -hmm. full of people full of passengers a commercial plane and they hijack it and they tend to crash it into a certain building are they allowed to shoot that down or are they not allowed to because it nothing has actually happened you know so so that's kind of the dilemma they've had they've had there was a dilemma for a long time you you don't know if it's an imminent imminent threat or not because they actually actually haven't actually crashed it in there maybe the people inside will overpower it maybe they they're the bluffing you don't know are you allowed to risk the the lives of all those passengers doesn't doesn't in there but doesn't canada canada even have that i think the convention was named after ottawa right the ottawa convention uh which one i i I think so they had the they had the Convention made in the 60s in Ottawa? Oh, uh, that was the Montreal one, I think. Oh, man, maybe in Montreal. But I think it was in a Canadian town still where, mm-hmm. where they basically decided, well, what do you do when it comes to air control? And I think in, in, oh, no. in, ter- okay. in terms of uh, these situations, it's it's more of you decide whether or not it's an imminent threat, whether or not they respond to your yeah. uh, orders. 
Okay, um, I, I think so because because still, if you are in a certain area, mm -hmm. you need to follow some instructions regarding the local. I don't know what's the what's the proper term for those guys who tell you uh, air traffic control. Yeah, ATC. Yeah, yeah. and if yeah. and if they tell you repeatedly do something and you just ignore them, then mm. well, good luck with the fire fighter pilots. Then yeah, 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 and right? and in Germany they said well. Um, the people who are innocent on there, who are the who are the the hostages, are you allowed to just kill them in order for that? And that's where there was a a lot of back and forth saying, yeah, but it's the guy, a casualty, the guy, isn't it? but they say, are you allowed to do that? Are you allowed to well, kill, to kill that? Well, you, you know, to kill them is just a well. If the guy says he he intends to kill somebody else by slamming the ramming the plane down into a shopping center yeah. or a high rise building or something like that, yeah. are you allowed to shoot it down at the expense of those people's lives? Well, are just, you allowed to do that? It's and just so that's a utilitarian approach. Uh, I I'm, I'm not saying I agree with one way or the other. I'm just I'm just uh, illustrating the the dilemma itself. You know. Um, I find that's pretty interesting. It's a pretty interesting um, uh, argument, and I think at some point they, some people came up and solved it, but then another group came up and solved it the other way and well, with, with a, a, a just as valid. You are, uh, equally you are valid but you are talking about uh, rights and political agendas, so it's not really solvable as a math equation, isn't it? I guess not. I, it would. It would you just you just make a decision. That's it. Uh, yeah, but yes uh, but, no? but they but they um, want to make the decision. They want to have a contingency plan for when it does happen, if and when it does happen. Does the devil work to have a contingency plan? Yeah, they have that. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, for those situations that, nev that have never happened. I mean, but but for, for things you, you can foresee going one way or another. For example, they have a plan right now already. They say, well, what happens if uh, North Korea uh, collapses? They can't just say, well, fuck. What are we gonna do? So they actually what, have certain well, plans should, now. What should Germany do? Uh, I don't know what Germany is going to do, but I know what that do I, they I, have I know in that North Korea. Well, not necessarily Germany, but I mean, what is the U.S. going to do? What is South Korea going to do? What is China going to do? So they have certain plans, and they also right. have certain cooperation plans right, with other back countries. At the, back at the conspiracies, all right. Okay. So, so don't you feel that geopolitics sometimes is just a make believe? No, not necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. There's a there's a lot I of mean, smoke look, screen, but there's uh, enough independent journalism that the you can many and then many times the influence of, of Russians in Latvia is mm -hmm. definitely in, in terms of well you know what happened in previous centuries for instance where or maybe previous years where sometimes on even uh, even some uh, either agreements between uh, kings or politicians got got uh, well showcased right mm -hmm. which which meant that at that time they were let's say hidden they were secret right. so nobody know nobody knew what was happening exactly and mm -hmm. why yeah and after in hindsight you see oh that was happening right and so the argument always is well how do you know it's not happening now okay right yeah so in a sense that uh, of course if you would have let's say if you would have uh, an agreement between the U.S. and the North Korean government mm -hmm. about, let's say, actually pretending to be on 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 let's enemies. Say, yeah, in a sense, enemies, right? It would be the most highly classified document all uh, in the world. Okay. Simply because, well, what uh, what constitutes the need for classification? The information, if it would uh, be known to the public, would, would cause a disruption in political uh, relations and ca might cause. Well, it's not just the public. It's because the pu public, no, a public of, of your of that specific country knows. It yeah. means the public of the whole world knows. That's why you might have something classified. You know, the reason that 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 they'll have um, classified intelligence in in let's say the United States is not. To, because the Americans can't know, it's because they don't want the rest of the world knowing. If it's public information, it's public for everybody. One of, one of those criteria, criteria usually is that actually the local, if the local society would know, they would, let's say, start some uprisings or something like that. Mm, but I think you I have mean, to look at it a case for case for case basis. Sure, you it's, know, it's just um, that, I don't think say, that's necessarily you, you can assume that for everything. You, you know? tell some North Koreans, oh, look at that, we we did in our municipality something. Well, what do they care? They they are not even there. Right, yeah. but when the local ones, when the local fi ones find out, oh, you have some a mess on your hands. Uh, so that's why I'm. Uh, that's but it's, why a, I'm but it's a hypothetical situation. Do you, don't you feel a very like? Specific one. Don't you feel like sometimes it seems like a theater? On a, on a, on a political scale, it seems like a theater, because it used to be the case. Let's say when you had, uh, I think in the Napoleonic Wars, mm -hmm. right, that you had many kingdoms uh, in in, uh, in uh, Europe, yeah. right. And many times, those dudes were just relatives, just all over from starting from oh, Spain, yeah, yeah, yeah. from Spain to <laughs> Russia. Course, yeah. They were just relatives. Because they, so, they intermarried, yeah. Yeah, and so if some some kingdom was attacked, the dudes just went to the neighbors because their neighbors were just their cousins or something like that. Yeah, well, actually, that was one of the reasons why a lot of them intermarried for peace. They said, why don't you marry 
this guy, the, the um, or control. Uh, let let that guy. Um, Peace is just a some of, some, of some of it end, ended up ended up being that way, but a lot of it was also was also for alliances for um yeah you yeah. know um um Scotland and Denmark, uh, you know why the Shetland Islands. Uh, change hands. Why they went from 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 uh, Norway slash Denmark to 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 Scotland? Because it was it was a, a a wedding present, because their 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 two kids got married, and that was it for peace and stability. Mm-hmm. Because if you're family, then you're not gonna you can't go to war. You know when when the prince and the princess become king and queen, then they own it jointly, and then and they don't go to war. Look what happened. Look what happened with uh, with um, uh, Catherine the Great. Her husband before was German. I mean she was German too, but but at least she spoke Russian, you know. Um, that's a that's a big shame. I, I don't know what you think about it. But I think it's a big shame that the Russians and Germans, and at least nowadays politically, n- well, sort of need to be enemies. Because um, in, cause a, in blink, a way, a blink of an eye, Russia, really. Russians really like the Germans in a way. Um, I mean, they at least econ- economically speaking, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, um, a, a lot of Russians. If you look at the technical names in Russian. Um, a lot of things came from Germany because yeah, the Germans were the that engineers. Well. That you look at, you look at a watch. You know, this is called Tifferblatt. Hmm. Uh, in in Russian, in German, it's called Tifferblatt. Um, yeah. <coughs> Luster, Luster. You know. Um, Wait a uh, second, but that's not a German name, is it? Uh, it it's actually no, uh, we came from from the old French, but yeah. Luster, Luster uh, they call it. And, uh, really? Luster, yeah, yeah. Um, which actually came old from uh, like like the shininess of something is what it called. It means in French the old old one. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are, there are loads. Uh, Butterbrot, you know. Yeah, but that's the one. Butterbrot. Sure. There are, there are, there are, there are so many uh, accounting in German is Buchhaltung. Yeah. In Russian Buchhaltung. Buchhaltung. Yeah. Um, you have uh, when you go to the gym you have a uh, Gantel. In oh, really? in German it's called Hantel. Yeah. yeah. It's Hantel. just the G and the H. Alcohol. Uh, alcohol. All those things. There's so much German. In in Russian, because they were they were they were like this. That um, doesn't mean that the Russian language is just poor when it comes to certain terms. No, but um, uh, uh, but well, not I certain mean, terms. But I, no, I mean, but there's uh, no other word for butterbrot, right? Um, sandwich. <laughs> but again, that's also that's 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 a, that's an Anglo, an old Anglo-Saxon word. Um, there's there's a I mean, and 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 does that does that mean that every country that says or every language that says a sandwich is also. Um, Etymologically poor, but not don't necessarily. The, but don't know? the French use it as a as a modern way of saying just san- sandwich? A sandwich. Yeah, because they have a, a a French word for it, right? They um, should have a French word. What would they What would they say? Um, I think they have. It's just that they. Sandwich. No, sandwich really. It's just yeah, yeah. It's the modern French because they like to say weekend as well, right? Um, not yeah, not not France, not France, not, yeah. not the end of the week in in a way they just say yeah. weekend as Actually, in, as in um, English. Where I grew up in North in 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 uh, in, in French speaking Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually say fin de semaine instead of weekend. Canadian French is a little bit different, right? Uh, it's quite different. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's quite different. It's it's about as similar to French, fr- uh, French from France yeah. as. Swiss German is to German German, hmm. which which is quite different. So um, the French but don't. But you don't un- have the, the French, accent, right? French don't understand Quebecois. Uh, I, I myself I don't, uh, because I I've been living in Europe for ages, hmm. and also my family um, is not from Quebec. They're not Quebecois. We spoke we spoke French, but we spoke European French in my family because my parents came from the old country, right. so we spoke that French at home. Yeah. So I was always a little bit different to the Quebecois. Um, in terms of the language, I always spoke French, and they all went to me, oh, 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 oh Monsieur parle français, oh, because I spoke like a really clear French, um, a little bit like if you spoke British English. You arrived in, oh. North, in North America, and you speak, oh, hello, I would like to purchase a loaf of bread, and they go, yo, what you talking about? So it's that that kind of that kind right. of that kind of a uh, change. Um, a lot of it's, it's, it was really a lot of fun <laughs> having that in, in in North America, but I, I grew up with that. That's the French I know. I can imitate a bit of Quebecois, but it really is a different dialect. Mm. But they use a lot of antiquated really old terms like uh, they don't say um, well the things that were anglicized in France for example mm-hmm. hot dog they say in Quebec they say le chien chaud ah. uh, they don't say le chewing gum right. chewing gum they'll say la gomme à mâcher in Quebec <laughs> they so it's a literal translation a literal it? translation in France when you go park your car they say le parking uh-huh. and in, in, in Quebec they say le stationnement which is exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, a lot of it. Uh, I mean, that happened in German as well. Uh, so it's not necessarily that it's that it's. Uh, I mean, what what Russian took from German is just because some of those things were just available in German, so they took it over. In in German, you say uh, "Ich habe ein Computer." 
German, you know? Germans like to adapt, right? The English language, at least. It seems, well, I mean, it seems I mean, they, I really mean they, 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 they have their own words. They have their own words as well, but some of them, I think, they just took, just took over because it just ended up becoming international. Uh, the computer, they say Rechner mm-hmm. in German. Ich habe ein Rechner, which means I have a... What, rechnen the, means to compute. Is it the same as the French ordinateur? Uh, exactly. Yeah, mm. yeah. Which puts things in order. Only yeah. tell, you know, um, the thing, the thing that puts in order, yeah. uh, which is again the indexing. And the, yeah. Because um, sort of the translation for that in, but in ju- English but would be calculator, wouldn't it? Um, no, the no, because in French they have uh, calcula- calculatrice. The, all right, but the pocket calculator would be uh, Taschenrechner. Taschenrechner. That's right. Yeah. Right, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, but that's but that's a that's a that's a calculator, pocket calculator, Taschenrechner. Yeah. What was that song? I'm the operator of my pocket calculator. Remember that? That was a German band. Um, what was that? Kraftwerk. Oh, right. Kraftwerk. Yeah, yeah. Might be the case. <laughs> and the first, the first like real techno band. First real electro band. Kraftwerk. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely. I, I've heard of Kraftwerk. Uh, Kraftwerk. Yeah. It's just that. Yeah, it definitely wasn't. I I know of Scooter. Oh, I know of them. I saw him recently. I saw him just, you about, mean just about a month or two. What's it called? Axel? Uh, uh, ba- Baxter. Oh, Baxter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. H.P. Baxter. I, I, I saw him actually. Uh, um, Hi, ba, hi, ba. Yeah, no, no, I didn't see him in concert. I mean, like, I just saw him just, just because uh, we were, we were at a, at a place together, at some, mm-hmm. uh, some, some function together. Um, yeah, yeah, that guy. It's funny. I just mentioned him to to somebody the other, the other day, just two days ago, and he said, <laughs> what? "Oh man, hi, ba, hi, ba. How much is the fish?" <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, but good on the guy. He's, he's, he, he made a success, and you know, he, he did something and he, and, and he had success with it. Good for him. Don't you, know? you feel? Don't you feel that uh, music is similar to the '90s nowadays? At least the popular music. How so? Well, I mean, it seems to me that many house tracks resemble the '90s tracks of oh, do you of mean dance because music. because a lot of stuff was sampled and now they're they're sampling a lot of oh, stuff? Not really. It's just a recycling. It's, it's yeah. It seems just a recycling. Hmm. Uh, I mean, there are some people doing new things. Um, there's a, I mean, there's a much more emphasis now on mass. A music stuff like now instead of what do you mean, be, mass? well now instead of uh, setting a goal and saying okay why don't we have a hundred bands and we'll have them each go a hundred platinum albums like each of them sell sell a million who, who says that uh, well this is how it was before they said let's develop a band it was a more oh you mean the company literally just the, said, re- oh. the record companies yeah oh, yeah really? yeah they, they they said they said well we know we have a band and they were happy with them selling this much All right. so now what they said they said well let's have less bands and let's have them sell this much so you're you're really pumping as much as you can out of that one song, which so, I mean so ma- makes more sense. Could, could you could you Finan- least, sorry economic sense? Yeah, could you guess Financial at sense. least one one example that would be actually just a result of such kind of planning? Um, I thought it all it was all like, oh nice we we can make some money right good, well, let's go. Yeah, well, I mean stuff is pushed. Oh, except stuff is pushed for mass, course, the boy mass bands, marketing. The boy bands, of course, but those were planned, right? But I mean, and um, the girl bands. Most of that, most of the stuff you'll see is actually planned. In that way, you have. Songwriters come in, you, you mean and then somebody come. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. What? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And if or if they see something which has a little bit of a spark, they say, okay, we can really develop this. But the intent is to develop something, not to sell a million albums like before, but it's to sell like ten, twenty, thirty million, and and get the most out of it out of that one act. So you don't need if you want to. Let's say if you want to make a hundred million or a hundred million dollars. I'm just spouting random numbers, but just something just to give an example, to give a concrete example. If you want to sell a hundred million records um, and make a hundred million dollars as a, as a company. Okay. Well, if you do it with a hundred acts selling a million, or if you can do it with 10 acts, each selling 10 million, well, it makes more sense to have the 10 acts. So that's why, you know, you don't have to develop them. You don't have to work with them and from album to this and that. Is it, so is it, is it relevant in Europe though? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's, maybe a, it, it's, it's, it's a business model. Maybe it's a business Britain. model. It is. A, a friend of mine the other day, who's a, who's a, a little bit older than me, said, "Ah, music today now it's all the same shit and it's all crap." Back when I my day I used to have good music, and I told him, I said the music is still out there, sure. but it's just not being promoted as such because now the emphasis is on um, uh, what do you shameless feel, commercial stuff. What do you feel would be uh, under the term uh, promoted? Um, mean, the mean stuff that's on on on. Well, I mean, what's promotion? When you turn on the radio, when you go uh, um, watch, watch videos, stuff that actually get pushed. Now, a friend of mine, actually, uh, who's played in several bands, is uh, just put out another album. Um, he has his autograph, his autograph session in two days, and I can't make it. Um, Wait, so you would like to have his autograph? No, I know him. We we meet for dinner uh, oh. of, um, of at least once a month, but um, uh, I've known him for years. But um, his album, he's, he's also been a lot of other successful stuff. Um, 
and uh, now his his uh, his latest album is coming out. He's got a great producer, and he's in and uh, and they're already getting a lot of great press and stuff. And they've played some festivals uh, already now in the in the summer. But th that's the same thing. It has he has to promote it, promote it, promote it, promote it. It's all about promotion now. It's a it's a product, and you're the salesman. They, that's what the music is nowadays. They don't expect uh, the sales to bring the biggest income, right? They just want uh, events, right? Um, well, now the record companies are changing things. Now record companies are doing something called the 360 deal, which means they will make money from, not just from, from your album sales. And who does that? I mean, who? Everybody. Who? I mean, have to I mean, which artist would agree to that? Because you lose your rights to the. Um, that's true, but I, I don't. I the still alternative, don't get, I the don't, alternative. I still don't get what the master really is, mm. but still, I understand oh, okay. that you, that you just don't get paid for your for your for your work. Well, well, here's the thing. Um, um, you don't get royalties. You remember I mentioned work. the other day. Remember I mentioned the other day that that promoting stuff yourself and distributing yourself is just not possible. We don't have those kind of channels. Well, you except know? in those cases where the, where it worked, right? I mean, um, that's what I that's what I meant. What what like was the yeah what was you know, the what was the I'm like, real I, deal? I'd rather play lottery. Uh, you know, I think I have more of a chance more of a chance of playing lottery because first of all, your stuff has to has to get out there. Secondly, it has to actually appeal to people. Um, and there's a lot of good music out there. Um, and if you do it with your own backing, that's really more of a. I mean, it's it's an exception. Look how many things hit number one in a year, and tell me how many of those then were independent things you know justin bieber for example he went on youtube he had his own songs on youtube the guy sang he played the guitar himself mm -hmm. um the guy's got talent um i don't really like the music there i'm not saying it's bad it's just not my taste the music that's out there but the guy has talent the guy does the stuff himself you know he plays guitar. he can play um and and he's canadian and uh, hey you know look at that <laughs> and uh um, but he's, uh, I mean, I mean he, he did it, but look what's behind that. A lot of promotion, a lot of, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff there, you know? There's all kinds of, he wouldn't have made it just with his, his YouTube videos. Um, Didn't, well, you, of course, somebody has to take you under uh, his wings. Or he would have made a lot less, let's say. All you right, know? yeah, fair you enough. Know? He, maybe he'd make a, whatever, a couple grand a month, but I mean, the guy is now a multimillionaire um, who just canceled his tour just two days ago. Um, which I understand, poor kid. That's that's really hard. He's been on tour for eighteen months, um, and it's still a pretty damn good life, right? Uh, tour life is hard. Tour life is real hard. Don't forget that the day be, the day you're doing a show, you show up, you do sound check, everything everything gets set up, whatever, and you're just doing interviews all day long with all the local TV or or, or press stations, and then you have to go on stage again in the evening and put on a show. I guess and he's entertain fine. People. I guess he's fine. Um, he's getting well just, just well paid for it. If he, if he, if he won't do too much blow. <laughs> It'll be fine. Well, some people do that to cope. I've I've experienced that too. I've never done it myself, but I I've I've seen enough people. And I've but wait a, a second. But then you have missed out, right? On some some gorgeous parties. Then. Uh, well, I've been to a lot of cool parties. Well, um, of course, it's, it's just that you probably could enhance the awesomeness with some mm. psychedelics or some some psycho nah. psychoactive substances. Is well, what let me I put mean. it this way: I left out the psychoactive subs substances in the in the in the sense of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I left out the drugs. So I had a good time. So what would you say to those who actually didn't leave the drugs? You made a mistake. Um, if you can, if you can still do a good job, because I mean, at the end, it's, it's work. People are relying on you. People are making a living off you. Mm. Um, you know, all the people on the on the tour, they're they're on the tour so they can make money. They're not there just for fun. Yeah. They're there because they're there to, to support you in what you sure. do. It's it's a it's a business, and nobody has ever really um, made a long term. Uh, has earned a living long term and reliably from being stoned or being fucked up and, I, and I'm not sure about the stoned part aren't there too much too many musicians nowadays who are really literally stoned you have to be reliable you have to come up with new music good music um, but if you're popular enough somebody else writes music for you right mm, well that depends that depends where you are but again you have to be fit enough to, to, to be on stage. Now, sure. compared to drinking, let's say you want to have a, a beer every night, fine, but there's there's a difference between one beer and getting fucked up every day or out all the time. Um, or, just, yeah. or, or the singers who can't come, come on stage sometimes, uh, you know, as it, it has happened sometimes anyways, um, you come on, you're just like, blah, blah, blah. You, you're you, just terrible, you put on a shitty show, people don't, don't want to see that. Don't you, don't you associate, because uh, in a sense, I, and I don't have anything against drugs, by the way. Yeah, I'm, sure. I, I, I don't take anything myself and I hardly drink, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I'm not like I would never yeah, preach to anybody. That's just my, all, that's just what works yeah, for me. But we all do consume some substances that ju are just pleasure. Absolutely. For pleasure, right? Absolutely. It's just that they're legal. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it, even even if if they're illegal, I'm not I'm not telling anybody what to do or not to do. Uh, Can but you the imagine same, in the, the same way I wouldn't want anybody to tell me I have to take more drugs or I should drink more. Can you imagine a world where let's say chocolate would be illegal? <sighs> See what I mean? You'd have a lot of unpleasant women. Unhappy women. You know, Especially on those if special they, days, for sure. Well, if, yeah, if they ban chocolate and shoes, you know, ch- chicks would be unhappy, man. I'm not sure about the shoes. They could get. <laughs> what, what was the, uh, actually, oh, yeah. Have you, have you noticed, well, I'm not sure whether or not it would be possible, but I've seen uh, a YouTube documentary about African dandies where they just, where, ju- where they just, I mean, they lived in a sort of just a, what, what's it, a mud house. Oh, yeah. right? but they dressed in in just tailor-made suits and it was just so ridiculous close to tailor-made yeah it yeah, was yeah. just ridiculous yeah 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 and they had uh, in, in lots Africa, of designer in apparel and also and i'm just thinking what because because uh, they traced it back before to the french i guess they told that the french were in the 50s or 60s there and they were all well dressed and so they yeah. wanted to continue that but it's still i mean have you ever noticed that people, if they act against their own best interests in a way, I mean, intellectually, everybody could say, well, yeah, I, I do understand that this choice would be the most economic one, the most rational one, but I still went with the emotional decision, right? Which have is you, fine, yeah. Have you ever noticed that it might be related to some aspect of nutrition? Maybe they're just undernourished. They, they are not able to actually make that commitment because they let's say they have in a deficiency Africa? i mean all over all over. When, whenever people know rationally what will be the best choice and still they make the emotional let's say oh but that has nothing to do with, with nourishment i think i think that has to do that? that has to do with well first of all africans aren't undernourished they're not, it's not a, it's not a poor place people well, are like, no, I'm not poor saying africans but they're not poor Africa. I'm, I'm i'm using that uh, the dandy thing as an extreme mm. example where okay. you have where you can definitely see all right a person clearly intellectually knows all right this decision would be definitely it's in not the long, necessary in the long term it would be more beneficial to me my yeah. whole family everybody but i still don't do it right and then it, uh, the question would be well how come you psychologically know what would be best in your circumstances and still and you are capable of doing it it's not like you are physically uh, incapable of doing it you just you know that will be better, but you don't like it as much as some other choice. But that's right? what it. That's that we're 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 we're, we're animals. Yeah, but you know, econo- we have an econ- emotional Economics well. sort of would tell you, well, everybody would like to go again, uh, go with their best interests, right? But maybe that is somebody's best interest. See, that's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my best interest is to wear black. It makes no sense. But I just like my black t-shirts from China. By saying, yeah, you're speaking the truth. You like wearing black t-shirts. I seem to wear nothing but black T-shirts. It's a, it's a, a, a my it might be just a practical color, isn't it? It's very practical. That's what, that's that's why I do it. Also, I have kind of a back. I had at some point in my life, I had a backlash against fashion, and I said I just want to wear something clean, neat, uh, just look well groomed, and but no focus on fashion. But and my friends actually make fun of me for that on oh, my Facebook pictures. For example, they're like, "Oh, another black T-shirt," you know. Yeah. There's even the black T-shirt that I traveled these 193 countries with the, with black T-shirts, yeah. simple black T-shirts from China. Um, I mean, it, it's it functional. definitely goes everywhere. <laughs> it's true. It and then and then I read about Steve Jobs how he had the same black turtlenecks made, the same one. He just had a stack of them in his cupboard. And I was like, "There you go." It's See? Simplicity. Not because he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, seen by some people as a genius or, or, or as a big success story, but it's just somebody who's famous where they're like, okay, well, somebody, somebody obviously has made it in life, even with a philosophy like that. And my, I mean, it's not really a philosophy. It's more, it's more, um, um, a, a, a backlash against it's more technology. fashion stuff. It's just technology people. Have you, have you seen Mark Cuban? Yes. Yeah, the yes. dude goes uh, with a t-shirt on a gala or something like that. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah. All right, I'm I'm balling. What you want to do? <laughs> right. It's just that you 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 don't need to care about uh, the fashion opinions. I I like to I like my yeah. There was there was one point I used to I used to have a girlfriend who was really into fashion, um, a and she was very good at it. She had a great sense of that stuff. And at some point, I just I. You as a musician, yeah, you probably would be the best to actually make the same conclusion in a sense that, well, fashion or at least the sense of fashion is sort of comparable to the sense of musical harmony and musical composition. Well, part it? of his creativity and and, and appreciation. No, no, what, for, I, what I mean is that you clearly know that something goes with something and something does not go with something. Okay, in yeah, music, yeah. and that you just 
could see in fashion as well. I oh, mean, there are some colors taste, that go, that go to together with, with and uh, just that go. Maybe don't just go. more of an elaborate taste, perhaps. Um, and I and I was found. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I just at some point I said I don't need. I just found it unnecessary. I found it. Uh, it's time consuming, isn't it? Um, it's not because of that, actually. Really? I, 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 um, I never minded the time that went into it. Um, I enjoyed looking, looking good and putting on nice stuff. I found some of it was nice, but at some point I said, I said, it, it just didn't hold any more value for me. I said, I don't see any value in me doing this. If other people want to, again, I don't judge them. It's up to them, and they have to find what's important to them because I don't expect the things that are important to me to yeah, be important to See, and that's, that's the part what, what I wanted to ask you about the dandies. Yeah. If you would go to Africa, you see just poor people well, in in the Western standards, poor people all over, yeah. right? They might yeah. they might be nourished fairly well. Well, they're not poor. Uh, at least me. at least they're they, not poor. <laughs> they're, they, they are some of them are happier than, than 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 actually most of them. Most of them are happier and, and better off in their com- in, in, as a community than, than than we are really. Well, that's the social that's aspect, isn't yeah. it? That's the social aspect of wealth. Yeah, isn't it? Well, yeah, they have everything they need in Africa. They have everything they need in Africa. They, 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 they would Except be happy. Except longevity, isn't it? Mm, no, there are some old people in Africa too. I mean, the, the I mean, for sure, the it's a thing continent. The thing, that's, sure. the thing that's missing. The thing that's missing is more. Is more. See, that's the thing I, I, I encountered a lot actually um, outside of Africa. Once I had spent, I mean, I spent years and years in Africa, and actually from all the continents. Um, it, in, it sometimes in the world, sounds like you, yeah, like, like you lived twice or th- or three times almost, because <laughs> you're not that old. And it sounds like you have, have lived, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm well, in the I lived, I lived twenty years there. I lived for a couple of years. Yeah, well, yeah. how old are you, dude? It seems I mean, like I mean, you've I mean mid- lived several lifetimes. I'm in, my, I'm in my mid-forties, so you know, I had a chance to try this. I had a chance to try that. So, so between Germany and Africa, there's not much time then. Um, well, I, I spent several years in Africa, and also going back and forth regularly on a regular basis, mm-hmm. um, and uh, from all the continents. In the world, Africa is my favorite one. It's oh, also the most on, come oh, on. absolutely. Oh man, no, no, you're just. It's the most rewarding one to travel. Huh? No doubt, no doubt. There's no comparison. Um, I've been to every country in the world, absolutely, and and the African ones are the ones I I'll, I'd go back to in a heartbeat. Um, there are certain ones. I mean, there are a lot of countries I want. I I, I enjoy visiting. Uh, the Baltics are fabulous. No, um, you don't need to be politically the, right. It's decent. Oh no, no, I, 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 this is my choice to come and spend a whole month here. Uh, well, actually, what's your next destination? Um, we're gonna go to to Tallinn tomorrow. Hmm. I want to show my girlfriend Tallinn. You know, it's a bit different. But, 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 but we spent we spent uh, two weeks in Lithuania uh, before coming here. So what about uh, well after Tallinn? Um, I'm gonna go see some friends and family in uh, in Germany. Hmm. And then we're going to go to uh, to Hungary. We're going to spend uh, August and September mm-hmm. in Hungary, where my girlfriend's from. So, and I got some friends there as well. I know people there also. Um, we haven't You've been, been there. to all countries. You have friends all over the world. Uh, Pretty much. Yeah, more or less. More or less. Uh, also, I did a lot of couch surfing and stuff like that. So, and I had a lot of. I'm, I did a lot of a lot of like social gatherings and stuff. And and uh, the people I I I, I couch surfed with. I mean, uh, most of them I'm still in touch with. Because I, I I went there I, I went to couch surfing I never did it really for a free hotel uh, um, I mean there were some places where it's just just not worth to do couch surfing because the, the amount of mean? money you spend to go to their places because usually most regular people don't live centrally ah. so you have to go outside of the the, 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 the time and and money mm-hmm. and you know the bother and expense to actually get to a place outside and then find it maybe make a phone call and whatever mm-hmm. um, in the, some of the cheaper countries you're actually you know uh, you, you may as well spend the extra dollar or two and have your own place if you want privacy if you want a little bit of luxury and something nice you get your own place nobody tells you when to come in go out you don't have to be quiet you don't have to clean this and that somebody comes and cleans it for you whatever you know mm-hmm. but um, um, I I, uh, I preferred couch surfing and I didn't necessarily save money with couch surfing sometimes I did sometimes I didn't but I've had I just had great experiences with couch surfing and I would meet a lot of people and stay in touch with them because um, that was really the reason why I did couch surfing to meet people especially to meet locals which is fabulous that's that's what you want to do that's why I travel to go see people would you be able to say that after let's say the 10th or 20th host you see some common patterns and then it's not that interesting anymore mm, no everybody's different come everybody's on different. you're too politically correct now. no no seriously you're, you're everybody's just different too politically correct <laughs> Well, there are, there are, like I said, almost everybody I, I'd stay in touch with. There are some where I, where I said, okay, whatever. 
Um, some people also just said, you know what, I'm not here for interaction. I stayed with a lot of people. I just want to give something back. So the keys are there. This is, the, you know, and drop them in the mailbox when you when you leave. I've had that too. You know what my guess would be that you are literally able to say nobody in the world is mad at me. Um, I think I think some people are. It's, di- people it's difficult ha- to imagine ha- a, pe- a person who would be mad at you. Uh, Unless you, of course, did something really, real terrible. Couchsurfers, no. Couchsurfing, no. Um, they're, 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 uh, uh, what, what is it? Uh, nothing is fair in love and war. Uh, so, but, but wouldn't you so. say? I mean, let's say. All right, you. I mean, you've you've met probably tens of thousands of people by now. I yeah, mean, especially for my concerts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're just you are just on an, on another scale when it comes to those things. So. Would you just, let's say, humble as you are, politically correct as you are, would you be willing to say, well, yeah, I'm sort of a, a, a universal charmer? I, I no, I, a lot of people. I've 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 heard people say, oh, gee, you're very charming, and um, it's not. I I'm, I'm not aware of. I'm I'm really just being myself, and I don't try to be politically correct. Actually, I certainly don't try to be politically correct. And you still are very very well versed in in people. Um, because I genuinely like people and I genuinely like contact. I see, you know? that's, what, that's what I mean. Um, I you, actually, I actually you, look forward to it. When you go all over the world, yeah. I would like to know whether or not you've encountered somebody who says, oh man, that Eric, that's a bastard. That's just a bastard. Because um, that would be the most interesting aspect of all of your trips. I had one guy. I had one, <laughs> all right. I had one I had guy, one guy. Um, in one West African country. Who was, who, who, was my, who was my host? Um, Somalia is in West Africa, right? No, that's East Africa, uh, other side. Oh, but, right, other but, side. But yeah. anyways... Um, uh, oh, I, I, Sierra Leone was in the West, right? For example, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, and I, I couchsurfed, couchsurfed through all those countries. Hmm. Um, and... Uh, or I, I didn't mind. Sometimes I even just invited, get invited to people's places just, just like that, just for a day or two or three or four. Um, so that's happened too, you know? All right. Um, when I um, and there was one guy and he was he was a little bit upset at me because he was like you know you got a great girlfriend I was like yeah, yeah thank you I think so he's All like right. oh th- can you get me can't you get me a Western girl and I was like that's not how it works Western girls typically oh, it's not typically that want want wants that, you know that was a genuine a- a question uh, yeah and and that's something that may work in some parts in some communities in some <laughs> thinking in Africa um, you know find this girl and and you know can you get me a girl it's like. <laughs> And I'm like, so you want me to get a girl and say, I got a friend in Africa who needs a girlfriend. You know, can you go talk to him? Um, and trying to explain to him that may work in some places in Africa. You introduce girls and say, because they're looking for connections for different reasons. They're for so different, re- which, which have to do with the way society is. But, you know, trying to explain to him the independence of a lot of German girls. Uh, do you not, mean not all, but a lot. People are generally more independent um, in, in Germany, let's say, than in some West African countries. It doesn't mean they're smarter or less do you mean? More. Do you mean that he actually meant? Of he was. He he said. He said. Well, but your girlfriend is. She, you know, she got a sister. I said, yeah. He said, oh man, well, well, you know, can you get me in with her? And I was like, you don't even know her. She doesn't even know you. She's not going to say, okay, you know, it's not an arranged marriage. And I I try to explain this to him. And, Maybe and he I, meant just a blind date. Yeah, but he lives in West Africa and she lives in Germany. The more so, exotic, the more the better, probably uh, for some. Yeah, and for me to set up a Skype date, I think she'd never talk to me again. You know, with some African guy, I don't know, because you know, a lot of people have stereotypes, a lot of people have ideas, and also just she just might not be interested. She may get a lot of offers herself, for all I know. I don't know, but it's just Wait not saying, the kind of but thing. But then that's the one example you would say about somebody who. Well, he wasn't even. He wrote me. He wrote, he wrote me emails and he said, "Man, you know, you're really letting me down," and so he was. He was upset, and I said, "I and, and I said, I said, you know, he's just playing around, that. isn't he? Uh, he's just playing around. It sounds like, oh I, man, oh I, man, I hope look so. Her. I hope so. I like hope that. so. Then I hope so. Then, um, but yeah, I've, I've had I've had people be be uh, um, be upset at me. Um, but what I, try I mean, to, if, what if, I try to do is I try to be straight, though. I try to be straight with people um, because I find that if you can communicate well, then you know, and uh, show that you have either made a mistake and admit it, and say sorry, I fucked up, or Sorry, sorry. Or, or here's your girl. I made it. Exactly, exactly. I fucked up. Here's your. Hang on. She's in my pocket. Oh wait, other pocket. <laughs> you know. Um, then, then generally people are are okay uh, if you just um, if you just be um, first of all direct, uh, secondly honest. Um, and so I try to I try to do. To, no, wait a second. No, what would you say about Japanese people? Um, Japanese people are trying to be helpful in their way by not saying no. For example, they. 
because to them culturally they consider that a form of respect hmm. you know when you talk to a japanese person uh, who was it who told me the one guy who went to do business in japan and he was telling me he said oh, i had this idea that the japanese guy I, I knew i'd have to try really hard to convince him i didn't think they'd go for it but i really want to try hard i'm talking to the guy and he goes oh yes 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 i said well then we could do this we could do this and the japanese guy yes 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 well then and then after we could change it to that and japanese guy oh yes 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 and he's going to think oh this is great oh, the guy's agreeing with me fantastic in japan however it means yes i hear you and i understand what you're saying now, it doesn't mean I agree with it, but it means, yes, I'm confirming that what you're saying is coming through to me. Mm. And he's like, oh, and, and we can do this. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah. So do you want to do it? The Japanese guy, no. <laughs> and like that. And he was, he was uh, yeah, um, he, he got, uh, he, he's pretty lucky the Japanese guy said no. But although a lot of Japanese have learned in the last years to that you kind of have to say no to Westerners because uh, they may not understand um, the, uh, the way Japanese typically say no which is by just not saying yes, you know, maybe tomorrow or let's see, or uh, which uh, you find a lot in China, for example. But that's uh, an example of not being straightforward, right? Well, for the Japanese, uh, um, they place um, honor over uh, uh, the importance of, 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 of honor and respect over um, being straightforward. So for us, it so may is be... It, so is it... Uh, what, it's not what's necessarily the, What's the proper word? Commandable? Um, it depends on the perspective, you know? That's uh, culture 101, you know, cultural differences 101. Everything is relative. It all depends on perspective. Wait a second, but then you probably have a come, come across something that you could objectively say, all right, I think that's stupid. Everybody agree? That's stupid. Everybody who's out on the outside, let's just agree. That's just stupid. But, but, but you have to see where it's coming from, and then, and then you may actually... Of course, it has know. a context, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. But, but you could still say, well, even the context is stupid. Well, right? I met a guy once, he told me, he says, I killed somebody, and I thought... You know, I was saying like, the dude told you he killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. He said, I spent some time in, in prison. I killed somebody. I was like, oh, so, oh, wow, okay. And then, and you know, I never thought to think about well, the, you know, the guy's a fucking I th- murderer. I think, but then, yeah. but then we found out it was in self defense, or because uh, it, it was his dad who was beaten, who had been beating him, and one day his dad came with a knife, and then he killed him, something like that. I forget this story. This is uh, also about fifteen, 15 I could years imagine, ago. I could imagine. I could imagine That's a context. I could imagine you just doing the most reckless thing and still not going to prison. <laughs> okay all right literally um because uh, you just would probably just just in, in in 10 seconds just all right he's that type of character uh, I'll, I'll just i'll just switch my <laughs> charm mode on um it, it's useful it has been useful um traveling around the world that i that i usually can if i meet somebody i can usually guess what part of the world they're from um what do you mean like uh, ethnicity yeah and then usually what language oh, can you differentiate between the japanese and the south korean for instance oh definitely yeah oh oh absolutely look at absolutely. you um, so what's the what's the giveaway the um eyes? uh no probably uh, not the eyes uh no uh well the language for one well i mean um, no i mean uh purely visually um the way they dress what the way they dress um the, the 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 koreans will typically dress still a little bit more form while the Japanese are getting a lot like more the Western where they kind of have the relaxed uh, fashion All coming right. um, the, the also Japanese look like hipsters um, oh yeah totally hmm. to, I mean to put it to, uh, simply yeah yeah absolutely yeah. and you, you can see a lot of the stuff they have they have more expensive stuff than, than Koreans Koreans typically typically do um, because they have a you know they've been a very advanced society uh, economically advanced society for quite a while and so they're used to certain luxuries and uh, and again, you have you have a lot of people. Um, uh, well, they're used to a certain openness and stuff. Which I mean, Korea was a was a freaking dictatorship for you know thirty years ago. You know, thirty years ago. Yeah, man. In the eighties. Wait a second. Check it out. What South Korea? South Korea was was a complete it was a was was a was a basket case. You know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what changed to that? Um, they decided to open things up. Taiwan as well. Taiwan was uh, was in the eighties. Yeah, uh, the same with China, right? In uh, the 80s. Yeah, but China still has still doesn't have any democracy and still and still is a a, a centrally um, controlled market economy. Is you it? Know? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a it's a it's a, it's a what, what's it called? What's the name for that? But they probably um, still have many people who control private capital there. Uh, in one shape or another, right? Yeah, but when you get up to a certain when you reach a certain size in China, then then generally they want to, um, people want to get out because the when you're the state aware of you, the state can take control of you. Mm-hmm. 
You know, I mean, if you're a millionaire in China or a multimillionaire in China, you oh, won't keep your money in China. Actually, actually, that's what I wanted. Russia. That's what you I know? wanted to ask you. How come you are not uh, just a big ball, a multimillionaire, just just going around the world with yachts um, and, and private jets? Uh, I had that kind of life actually for a while. You mean private um, jet life? Uh, private jet, no. Um, uh, but I had that. I had a, like a nice life with fancy stuff and and whatever in a fancy. Well, you place were a comfortable life. You definitely had a comfortable. Life. Yeah, I had that for a while, and it just it did nothing for me. Yeah, see, it but did you, for me. you went the route I did, of, I, I did of it doing it more bare bones, I suppose, right? It, it, Whereas mm, you could just have that's going, what it be, that's what going it, that's what it became. Ul- ultimate, uh, ultimate uh, pimping, all right? I I did it because um, I, I I had a partner, like I said, the one who was in the fashion and stuff, had a mm. great fashion sense, and, uh, and 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 was very genuine at it, mm. um, and. Uh, she said you know you've been saving and saving all your pennies all this time why don't you spend a little bit and uh, she had some nice stuff she always dressed she always dressed very well um that's what i had been doing up to that point and then she said and then so what did you do um about investing um all kinds of stuff all kinds of stuff whatever i could find buying and selling stuff Hmm. or trades or shares whatever i mean this is a long time ago i'm talking about but with this and then with this person um and then uh and then i you know she said why don't you try this try that and she gave me stuff to wear and then one day i I looked around. We went to this fancy place and fancy shopping mall, and and I realized I had the same watch on, the same clothing, the same shorts. I looked exactly like everybody else. Mm. And that was that was where I said, "Ah, oh, the authenticity is not there." Yeah, shame yeah. on me. And I said, "I said none of this is me." And you know what? I feel comfortable. I remember we went home and I changed into a black t-shirt and jeans and black jeans, and I was just like oh, Chinese shirt, mm. and that was it. Um, and that's actually since then. That's already. It's almost. It's almost sounds like an identity crisis. Um, well, it's well, at least an Id- identity, much, I mean, identity. Me trying something called? and then finding it, and yeah. and in that time we went on some 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 things uh, which which you know we had a uh, uh, pretty uh, uh, fancy life, or maybe maybe just I consider it fancy, uh, but you know had like nice crystal chandeliers in every room, and you know and custom made parquet floors, and everything was fancy and mm, yeah. and whatever, and and uh, and uh, um, everything we did, everything where we went, all that stuff, it was. You know, um, and I just really and that was all in Canada, right? Uh, no, that was in that was a that was a in in Germany. Oh. Um, and uh, and I thought, hmm, you know what? None of this really interests me at some point. And so when that ended, uh, I just went back to basics. But then I had tried at least the other side, and I said, no, I actually know that I don't want that because I've tried it and I saw what worked for it's me. Ha- it sounds like you just didn't like the superficiality of it, in um, the sen- in the sense that. Uh, no material things would actually contribute to your identity, your personal identity or personal yeah. well-being. It's just the yeah, social status. It's not that I found it, it's found it superficial because I understand that people get sentimental about certain certain items or certain things, uh, jewelry and stuff like that, or or even guitars. In my case, um, I after that I started traveling really really heavy duty, um, like a lot more than I had before. Um, as, as a as a form of therapy? No, just as a form of me wanting to to do something and see something different, learn languages. First thing I did there was I went um, when that finished. Is actually went to China for quite a while. Um, Again, man, you when you go somewhere, you just go for a while, and it seems like yeah. what, what twenty years there, eight years there. What? what? I didn't spend twenty years in China, but I yeah, spent. Man. But for example, I spent seven years learning Chinese um, on my own, and then I found and the I fountain did. of youth, and then I went back. <laughs> And started Went with twenty space. year old. Yeah, <laughs> right. back in time again. Uh, I found this car. Um, uh, no, and then I, and then I um, um, and when I had gone as far as I could with learning Chinese, not in China, mm-hmm. then I said, okay, I'm going to go find a family I can live with. They had that whole thing where you take a, you live with a family and then you get you get lessons in Shanghai. All right. And I did that. And I stayed in Shanghai for a while and worked on my Chinese to really perfect it. Um, because I had done already seven years, and then I said, okay. And I had already visited China. I was already there like three, four times a year mm. um, by that point. And I said, okay, I want to go, and I really want to speak Chinese. Oh, it's and a, I really but the, by it. that point, you had already. Uh, I could speak it, but no, I was missing I mean, the real, the, the living there. What Chinese. I mean, you you financed it by liquidating your portfolio. No, no, by 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 working and playing music and stuff. You know, mm. by music. Um, so you still worked. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I still worked, and and uh, you know, and and for a while I was working, uh, uh, you know, like working half on, half off, half on, half off. I did that for several years, um, and uh, so I would travel and then come back, work, travel, work, um, and then uh, yeah, with all kinds of things in between, and and uh, but I really focused on traveling. And there was one point where I came back from this one trip, 
to West Africa again. And I came back from, I think it was Senegal, and I just thought, and I said, I come back to all this stuff. And I said, you know what? I don't miss any of it. You mean and, back and, to Senegal? No, no, back to my home ah. in Germany. And I said, I don't miss any of this stuff. I don't miss any of it. I said, I look at this stuff and none of it means anything to me. I'd be just as happy being on the road somewhere. Uh, I remember just before I had spent a month in the Pacific with my little backpack. 4.4 kilograms with everything in it. Laptop, iPad, camera, clothing, But everything. Dude, it sounds like you would just like to be Justin Bieber. Just going all over the world, pl- meeting. No, that's too much work. That's too much work. All right, because so he has to work a lot. That's, that's you, hard work. You would like does. to be less of a Bieber than, but still, you would like <laughs> to go around the world it's and not still going around, work. It's not going going around the world. Well, I mean, and I still do the thing you I, I like still, to do. I still play music. I, st- I, yeah, I still I play mean. music. Yeah. I still go back to Germany and play music occasionally, or not just wherever. Wherever um, I still go back and play music occasionally, I just do a lot less. I enjoy I enjoy a lot more free time. I'm getting a little bit older, and I notice that I that I value my free time. Also, I value. Also, I'm not able to do as much because, um, you know, I'm not 20 years old. I'm 40 something. What, what's, so. what, what's actually your your social security plan for the future? Um, I mean, uh, most of, most of the people in Canada probably after their career is over or at, l- at least the productive years are over, yeah. they just go and uh, get their pension, right? Uh, I'll be getting a pension too. Yeah. You mean in uh, Germany? Um, I, yeah, I'll probably get one in Germany actually. I'll get one in Canada too, I think, or uh, I don't know. Um, I, I've been paying into it. You mean all these years? Oh, yeah. Well, how? Um, you don't derive income in Canada, do you? Uh, I, uh, that's a long story. Um, so you pay, well, so you when you get paid in Germany, you would pay something regarding Canada. Uh, there's a there's a there's a there's a long story uh, um, in, into it that I can't go into detail. Well, in uh, a nutshell, in, in a nutshell, I'm going to get a I'm going to get a pension. I'm you're gonna, I'm gonna getting get a pension. paid all over. Uh, let's just say that that um, I have income streams. Oh, you mean passive income streams? Uh, also, yeah. Oh, already? Yeah, yeah. Oh, then, then you're just yeah. a businessman. <sighs> Jewish. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> no, um, I I I, uh, I set some stuff up. Yeah, I get to, I get that. Um, there's. So, there's what's your advice? My for, advice for, for setting up income streams and traveling all all over the world. Uh, don't invest in real estate. What? What? Don't invest in real estate. Why? Uh, unless you're there to take care of it, but your growth will be. Uh, relatively low um, and you have a lot of work for it um, the the nature of again uh, the nature of finance has changed mm-hmm. you can take that money put into an index fund you can take that money and put into but you fintech. probably don't get fintech stuff is big here in the in the in the in the, in the uh, Baltics big time here what I do mean, you mean uh, fintech stuff yeah um, financial technology uh, no, no, companies a lot of that stuff specifically what uh, do here you mean? across the river or across the river you have Twino here You have loads. You have you have a, a, a Finbi in Lithuania. Although I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend Lithuania anymore because they just they just implemented a 15% percent tax uh, source tax. Yeah, but what I mean is w- where you see the return on any investment. Um, well, I mean, I mean, you you, diver- you diversify. It depends how much money you can you can put into this stuff. You know, um, you get a if we, if you have real estate, you need it needs to be managed. It needs to be repaired. It needs to be it needs maintenance and stuff. Um, If you have, um, unless you put a company to do that and you, you let them take their cut and you say, this is what I get. And if you're fine with that, then you're fine with that. Um, pure finance stuff is pure finance stuff because there's a risk and there's a crash every statistically boom and bust every seven years statistically. Otherwise you could just do index funds. Um, but you're not deriving your main income from index funds, aren't you? Uh, uh, I can't go into detail how I do, how I do it. Um, oh, so I, something I don't wanna, illegal then. I don't want to put that. <laughs> I, I don't want to put that online, <laughs> uh, or I don't want to put that out 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 in public. Um, well. um, but but um, there's there's all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, there's there's a million different ways to do that. Most people actually have, let's say, if they have a home and they have two or three hundred thousand euros in it, um, instead of trying to pay that off, what they they should, they should do is they should try to save that money, and then you can actually retire early with that kind of money, easily. You depends know? where you live. Depends where you live. I mean, but I mean, um, you don't have to pay taxes if you structure your things properly. If you look where you do tax base, you know, if you spend less than 183 days a year and you're not working, you know, and you're you're freelance, you're independent, you can you can structure all that stuff to um, 
to uh, to, uh, to be tax free, legally tax free. Sort of, sort of, uh, all would be manageable, but you, for instance, would still need an accountant, don't you? Um, you, you still need an accountant, or you can do it yourself if you, if you know how. And what what is your case with you? Uh, I do everything myself. I always have. Yeah, I always manage my money myself. Um, and maybe that was my that yeah. Was, well, that right. was my luck. Manage, manage the money, but I mean the whole. I mean, if you get income, whether it will be in Canada, or Germany, whatever. Yeah. You probably need to do some bureau- bureaucratic stuff, right? Um, so that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you can get tax advice, you, you know, and figure out how you can do stuff or how to pay either low or not at all. Um, you know, uh, legally, it's not worth going to, you know, going to jail over a couple bucks. It's never worth it. Um, uh, but you can do all that stuff legally, um, just depending on how you structure your affairs. So what is it? You don't have a personal assistant, right? No. You don't have a permanent uh, accountant as well. That's right. Hmm. You seem suspicious to me. I, Eric, I do it all you're myself. You're a suspicious Canadian. Here's here's my here's my here's my personal assistant. Here's my accountant right there. So all right. I mean, it it sounds good if it works for you. It's right? different but for everybody. It's, but in in regarding that information you gave me, it's it's sort of hard, difficult to combine how how what what the big picture looks like. Yeah. So so yeah. But all right. Good, good if it works. Um, the the I big suppose. picture is, uh, is, I mean, there are some people also online who are talking about this stuff, about how to make money um, and have income streams, uh, working some from, from, from websites, advertising. Do you mean e-commerce? Also, also some people, I mean, I got, I knew one guy, he did like, like friggin' ringtones back in the day. He set up this internet portal and it sold ringtones. He was making thousands a month, you know? And then the money he, took, he got from that, he did other stuff with it or invested it or whatever, or spent it, you know? Because uh, the the closest thing I've, uh, for instance, read is uh, you probably have heard of Tim Ferriss. I've the, heard of him. Uh, the Four uh, Hour much. Work Week, uh, the book he ah, wrote. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and yeah. it sounds yeah. almost uh, no. the same story as you. No, that's in a way. S- no, but but I mean, what I produce your hours that you need to put into yes, get, getting money and to increase the hours you can actually use for traveling. And yeah, hobbies. yeah, but that's but he's talking about a really specific specific uh, um, set of variables and a very specific outcome, which is not necessarily going to turn out that way for everybody. I mean, that's really a bit far fetched. But isn't it almost the same with you? Mm, no, I kind of because if you have income streams, do you need to manage it somehow? Well, if you have inc- income streams, um, well, you just man- you still have to manage it and stuff like that. Um, uh, I spend, I spend, uh, you know, I spend a certain amount of time every day looking at my finance stuff. Um, so you need you know, internet, that's for sure. I need internet. I have it everywhere I go in the world. I, you know, you spend maybe half an hour every Where day. Where are you just saying all over the world? All over the world you can get internet. S- sounds impossible. No, absolutely. You I mean. Get, you get a SIM card anywhere even you go. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. In Africa, it's actually easier with a SIM card. Yeah, easier because they don't. A lot of places don't have fixed line, mm, so yeah. so most people just have have mobile internet, mm-hmm. and that's all you need. Just text based stuff, really, you know. No big graphic stuff. Um, I know I know people actually I know people who do who do that who uh, um, who do exactly that. They have a certain amount of cash and they they just they just stuck it in like yeah uh, ETF tra- um, index funds. Mm, that will be another question. Well, yeah. if you are traveling so much, you don't have a one permanent bank then um, handling your account. In a way, you need some PayPal account or something like that. No, no, you can have an international bank. There are some very good international banks. You, you know, look at nowadays with a credit card. I got a credit card for my German account. I go anywhere in the world. I can, I can withdraw money. Ah, I just need a, let's say, a Visa or Mastercard or something like that, right? Yeah, I pay no fees. I pay zero fees anywhere I am in the world. How come? Just the account I have. Ah. A certain account. I pay no fees. I get like the, the, the real exchange rate, not All the right. bank's exchange rate. So I can take out, you know, whatever. If I only take out this Sounds much. Good. I, I I pay nothing. If I pay I take out this much. I pay nothing. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds uh, so good. I have no I have no foreign transaction fees and no uh, withdrawal fees. So how come you are so well versed in finance then? Um, Is this really the Jew in you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Um, I've always been fascinated with numbers, which is probably something that has to do with family. Also, in my in my family, there was a large. Um, my father did a lot of uh, finance stuff. Had a big f- kind of financing and real estate business going on. That's uh, why I don't like the real estate. 
Um, well, I saw how much he worked for it, and I thought, mm, I understand I just what he was doing. Mm. He was trying to get them as income streams, buy buy places, and then get them cheap, either at auctions yeah. or whatever, yeah. and then pay them off. And then after that, you have an, an income stream. You know, the rent will pay them off and then income stream. But I saw how much it was working, and I actually value my free time more than that. So mm. I think my father would have been we- uh, better off had he gotten management companies. He would have made less and have maybe have to pay them off a little bit later. Yep. But he'd have more free time, time with family, time with whatever, free time, mm-hmm. you know? Um, in my father's case, I think he enjoyed working that much and providing for his family, and that was just second nature to him. Yep. But I uh, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just a bit more modern and a bit more Western. Um, I think you're just a, a little bit more unique. Because how many people, well, let's put it that way, how, you've, you've seen people all over the world. How much have you seen people at least similar to you in a, in a way of the lifestyle and the affordability of that lifestyle, I, probably I, not many. I don't know. It's, it's never something I've thought about. Honestly, I just do my thing. But that's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. How many people have you seen doing uh, my so thing? S- yeah, do do Man. their thing. Bastards! I hope they you know get off my thing. <laughs> um, no, I I, I I know, but this is the what works what works for me specifically. I still go and play music. I still have an income. No, because 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 what I mean by that question is not to compare yourself and and be like uh, all, all of a sudden like big a big guy feeling like a big guy, but is that no, you re- almost I'm, I'm a regular you almost guy like anybody else, you know? That's you not know? that's not true. That's that's just a plain yeah. lie. You know you, you know the expression in English. Oh, I'm you, just, you know? I'm just a, I'm just a regular Joe here. Hmm. Well, well, look at the expression in English. My shit stinks too. You know that one. All right, all right. So, sure. so I mean, I mean, what I'm doing, I just. There was no manual, and there was no, there was no that's what genius. I, that's what I mean. You know, that nobody, led to it. nobody just, has just a manual. But since you are in the position you are, you are traveling so much, you need to be a teacher of so of sorts. Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure ninety nine percent of the people you meet would like to be taught by you when it comes to either either money or of the lifestyle in general. Or just some specific. Uh, but I also have a very topics. cheap lifestyle, you know, um, cheap Airbnb places, that's couch true, couch that's surfing. That's true. Come on, that's you know, not true. I have a relatively relatively cheap uh, um, uh, lifestyle. I do a lot of self catering. I do a lot of cooking when I go travel somewhere, you know, or I, and 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 or I'll be I'll be couch surfing and I will take Ryanair flights and have only hand luggage, you know. Uh, my girlfriend and I we flew the other day. We were in Iceland and we got fr- we got from Iceland back to Germany for thirty nine euros. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a stopover in London where we slept at my cousin's place for free. Mm-hmm. As the cousin I grew up with, we're very close. Um, so that's not an issue. And then we got to stay in London for a couple of days. And then we got to go, you know, we were in Iceland. Um, and, uh, you know, 39 euros we got to Germany. That's cheap. That's really, really cheap. Sure. But, but we look for those kind of things. Now, also, we're flexible because we have time. So um, it's not like a holiday thing where, well, I got to be back by this day. Because yeah, I, I, I got to work. Yeah. Um, we're, we're more flexible. So um, that means we, we can actually choose. Um, choose the cheaper day to fly. Um, we, yeah, 39 euros. That's what I mean. That is pretty cheap to get. And, and we had come from Canada, you know, and we had managed to visit, uh, to visit uh, Amsterdam, uh, to Iceland, and Canada um, for about 400 euros. All right. Oh, sorry. Um, and yeah, so uh, Amsterdam, Iceland, Canada, and London for about four hundred euros. Yeah, that's amazing. But it we, is. But again, we didn't go to any fancy restaurants. We we uh, you know if we were if we wanted a coffee, we went to McDonald's and had a coffee. We didn't go to Starbucks. We went to McDonald's and, and we had a coffee there. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what we did here. We didn't go to some of the fancy ca- cafes. We went to McDonald's or we went to uh, just a, just the 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 regular cafe place. Um, uh, whatever when we want to eat something here I'll, I'll go get some pilmeni or something like that or I might cook something here myself yep. um, or I would uh, or I'd go to the to the cheaper I, you know sometimes I go to Lido but or I might go to the similar places like that um, also some of those some of those uh, you know the, the, the those, those not buffet what do you call it, like the cafeteria style places mm-hmm. that's what that's what I do um, and uh, it's pretty easy or go to the supermarket and get the cooked food at the supermarket because they have the, the warm meals the sure. one prepared meals there. That's cheaper than going to a restaurant. It's cooked food and it's prepared. And still, you must encounter so many people who just ask you, can you teach me how I, to I find can't. those 39 euro tickets? Um, man, how did I find what, the 39 what, what euro tickets? What did the Icelandic people talk to you about? Um, they were more interested in... in, uh, in uh, you like fish? We too. <laughs> That's <What>? good. 
<laughs> um, no, they were more interested in in my life in the sense of uh, uh, music. Oh, you play music. Have you met anybody famous? That's a question I get a lot. Really? Yeah, yeah. How do you know anybody famous? Uh, have I heard anything you've done? And I'd be like, you probably have, yeah. Um, and they say, oh, and most people are more interested in whether there's a famous connection in there. Uh, are you famous? And I'd be like, I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm just a guy who plays guitar and sings. Um, you know, and uh, I'm sure they've heard something I've done. Yep. And 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 if they have, but I mean, that's the nature of my work. Of being a musician, that's the nature. You need people to listen to you. You need an audience. The more you have of an audience, the more success you have. Therefore, the better living you make. That's the whole nature of it. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to, do, to, to, to get more of an ego or trying to be a star. I'm trying to get lots of people to listen to my music in order to turn that into some kind of measure of success, which hopefully will give me a measure of financial expression. But you're not trying to uh, directly... Uh market yourself as that person you probably know my work from in a sense that hi i'm eric you, you probably know my work from that band or something like that yeah but that song but that's living in the past if i say look what i used to do well what are you doing now well i'm talking about the past that would be pretty silly of me you but know it's still a great introduction if nobody knows you uh hey i'm i'm the dude that wrote that number one hit nice to meet you yeah do people really need to know that though it's a great introduction. Come if it, on. If it comes up, but well, I, actually, I think as an introduction, it's a little bit presumptuous. I think if people, somebody gets to know me, then, then they say, oh, well, you did that. Oh, that's cool. Okay, then, you know, then they see there's a face behind it or there's something behind the face. Yeah, uh, um, well, I'm wait a second. You, would you really think that people think you are sort of arrogant or that you, that you state what you have accomplished? Um, I would find it arrogant to say, hi, I'm Eric who has done this and this and this. Uh, people say, what do you do? I say, I'm a musician. And things enough. Instead of saying, well, I'm the guy who wrote, da -da 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 -da, which everybody knows. That would be a little bit... That would be just... Silly. Or I've played with this person, that person. That would be self-marketing 101. Yeah, but what am I trying to get? Am I trying to get girls to girls to find me cool? Well, that, well that's you what know? I wanted to ask you. How come you, you are specifically trying to actually be so discreet about yourself? Um, because I believe that what I At do... At least uh, when it comes to your professional mu musical career. Well, it's not that I think anything I do is unimportant, but I think it's uh, as important as what anybody else does. Some people will work in a factory, some people work in a mine, some people work at McDonald's, some people make you music. Sound, you sound so egalitarian in a way that uh, all I, I, I'm, everybody I'm, is contributing yeah, to... <laughs> come on, man. Stakhanov. No, it's not... It's not... I'm definitely not... not um, uh, like like this super leftist super leftist thing definitely not leftist, um, uh, but it's just that I just think that um, what I do specifically is not. Um, I I'm, I'm happy that it makes people happy that I that my job involves um, making people happy when people. When I go home from my day at the office, I don't take homework. Mm -hmm. I take a big smile, and everybody leaves with a smile. We had a great time. We listened to music. You know, it was fun. He did a show. He talked some jokes. He fucked around. Everybody was laughing, singing, mm -hmm. dancing. At the end of the night, you go back, and you're either drunk, or you got a girl, or you, or you know, mm -hmm. or you, or you just get a big smile. You're singing a couple songs again. That's the best in the world because you're working with people. That's the best. That's what I like about my. Yeah, job, you have the you satisfaction know? of somebody actually that's enjoying right. your. I'm not what putting on do. a show. I'm. I am making a show, but I'm not putting on a show and saying, "Okay, everybody, watch me now." And that's a big difference. When I in the in the kind of performance that I do, I've seen some bands go up there and be like, "Hey, look at us. We're this and that." Okay, okay, you you get to watch us. You know, we're so cool. And look at us. And oh, girls, you like this. All it's right. my job All to right. go and make a party happen. Yeah, sure. That's you how don't, I see it. I know how to do it, but I need everybody for that party. I can't make the party happen by myself. Otherwise, I will just strum my guitar in my living room. Yeah, you you don't derive your necessarily your your self-perception and your value from that what you have done but still if people already know what you're about and what you have been doing it's already uh, a big just a big plus it's not really uh, it's not it doesn't come it wouldn't um, come off as as something uh, to as you would be a bragger or, or something like that it wouldn't uh, come off as, as bragging it would be just oh look hmm. at that it's 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 a fact that's it i mean well, but, I, I, but i'm still just like everybody else uh, right but i am i mean, yeah, that's mu I mean. musicians and 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 uh, you know whatever brad pitt or whoever you see on tv or, or in the movies those people who go home and they have fights with their wife and fight with their kids and they'll be like oh man oh, i gotta take a dump i was so you know? i was so confused when uh, you know when because i don't really follow it but i've heard that that uh, brad pitt uh, told oh i was drinking alcohol for the past, I don't know how many years. Yeah. What what's what's that about? In a way that well, if you if you have met and if you know personally, uh, fairly successful and, and uh, famous people, right? 
would you really consider them of being totally outside? normal people yeah that's what totally i mean totally normal right? some of them have got drug issues some of them has got family issues some of them has got so have you ever psychological seen, issues so have you ever seen somebody just hiding it so good in a way that nobody could tell that if you have any problems or not i've seen people well it's not about hiding but i've seen people who say this is the time to have cocaine and drink and go crazy oh this is a and good this is the time, and this is the time to work that's a good micro that's a good cocaine micromanagement right? well look i mean we might go have a couple of beers on the weekend or a mm. couple of drinks or vodka or whatever the hell we might go have a couple of drinks on the weekend but we were not going to do it at 10 a.m in the office no, it's you, good you know discipline. In the, it's just discipline well it's just there's things you do there things you do there if you can separate that and lead your life and have time for your kids have time for your family have time for for your professional stuff that you need to or mm. career if that's your goal and then you can have time where you can have a couple of drinks with your friends and 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 relax let go fuck around and that's there's a time for this and a time for that and the problem is when people assume that the musicians do that all the time which we get kind of back to what we mentioned before and when people think that that's what the musicians do all the time that's where you go into another another area a completely different area where you say whoa hang on a sec uh you mean you must party a lot you must fuck around a lot it's like well you know it depends the depends. show is a party on stage and it really is. I'm genuinely happy when I make my party on stage and mm -hmm. stuff. I'm genuinely happy. That's really me up there. And I'm having a great time. But when I'm done, I've had my party. You know, like I want to go home. I want to go home and have whatever. I see what you mean. A little drink like that. Because I know a lot of people, again, who do the, like, the showcase stuff, the exhibition stuff. Yep. They look at me, look at me, look at me. And they, you know, they do their songs. And after that, they're like, Ooh, cool, now let, let's go dance. Let's go pick up some chicks. Let's go do this. Let's go, let's go party. And I'm, for me, I can't. Because me, I actually really, I live what I do. So what I do on stage is, uh, is really me. And like I said, I'm there. If I see all the people there, I'm like, hey, I know how to motivate them because that's what I do professionally. And that's actually, that's my skill that I sell. Um, and that's what I should know. I should know how to actually put on a musical show. And so I will motivate people to sing, dance, uh, whatever, cry, stamp their would feet. You, would you, you be know? willing to actually try to, to write a, a manual for life? Well, I, I don't that think would be original, I right? I don't think it's possible because, because once again, I think manual for my life is not what works for everybody, but and vice versa. But here's the thing: you are a dude. I get up late in the morning. Who, you know, who's, who, I get up at eleven o'clock. Who's who's in the in the what's what's it called? Well, the 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 part of your life where you are still strong in a sense that you are you are not decaying is what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. And and you have that. Well, it's I would say fairly unique. Uh, ability to actually evaluate your past, your future, by the things you've experienced yourself, not second-hand information. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what you've experienced yourself okay. personally, right? And then it means you have a sociological and anthropological and ethnographic knowledge and competency that's probably not really matched anywhere. I mean, there's probably not that many people who have that same combination or similar combinations. Well, it, so, is what I mean, you could actually be one of those few guys who would tell uh, other people, well, look, I'm not saying I'm better than, at anything than you guys, but since I've had these experiences, this knowledge, I tried to just showcase what I found. And just, it's just me personally. Just what I found the most, let's say, important aspects of human life in general in our 21st century, for instances, right? And then you just start writing, well, after you are being born, <laughs> then <laughs> chapter chapter one How from, born? from zero to five, <laughs> and at the five years mark, you just say oh, if you have brothers with guitars, start starting oh, ta yeah. taking them or something it's, like that. So it sounds more something for developmental from six, psychologists. From six me. to ten, then from eleven to fifteen, yeah, all those sorts because it's never been done uh, before, right? Uh, there's, no, like, there's, sounds, there's nothing uh, what, of well, that kind. Well, developmental psychology. You know, that's, that's kind of, but like how to do it? I mean, there are yeah, certain experiences that kids need to, you know, to have. Um, a user manual. Basically, when you're born, you just, you just get a user manual okay. for, for, the, for the child. Uh, we could look at things that, that other societies do. And this is, this is pretty much what I got from traveling. I looked right. at things that other societies did. And for me, the most interesti interesting thing was to take the human experience what, and boil that down to the most necessary. And then I can start adding on to that. So by going to, I'm going to say Africa again. Uh, I use Africa a lot because in Africa, I feel they do a lot of things right. And because the connections there, uh, or daily life revolves really around the connections you have to people and community. That's the center of everything. Um, I feel that that part is actually 
they do it much better than we do in Europe. But isn't it the case that many times, all right, yeah, when you have that social group, let's say a tribe or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah, they have really close knit uh, relations. Yeah. And then it turns out, oh, we have a neighboring tribe. We hate them. We try to kill them. That's actually something which which is very exaggerated in the West, which, which yeah, the, usually the tribes get along with each other fine. The problems with there have been tribes is because um, they've been split by colonial borders. And I'm not saying all the colonists are bad and all the Westerners are bad. No, the Westerners actually brought a lot of good things in there. Um, they may have overstayed their welcome a little bit, but that's that's another thing that, that, that you, can, you can debate one way or another. Um, but usually what you'll have is you'll have political problems or the tribes because certain opportunities will be offered to one tribe because that's the guy in, the, in power. Yeah. So usually there's a more of a political reason for that. But the tribes usually themselves, from tribe to tribe, don't have a problem. Look, my parents were... were um, living in Africa in a, in a mostly Muslim country, and they were Jewish. But they had no problem with the Muslim neighbors because they were just people in the country as well. They didn't have a problem until it became political with the whole, um, the whole what people call Zionism. And can you imagine you know? if, if dudes like you would be in the politics, they wouldn't have such problems. Well, you, the problem is politics is a play some music. Um, <laughs> yeah, here have some sex, no drugs, but lots of rock and roll. Yeah, um, <laughs> I I don't know uh, or drugs in moderation. Um, uh, I I would I would be a, such a bad role model because, like I said before, I get up at eleven o'clock in the morning and I go to bed at whatever three in the morning. So I'm you, probably you eat too much humble pie, man. Uh, you, I, I you need to brag more when you where you are definitely I need to let it justified. Hang, you know what I'm saying. Um, um, I, I have um, no, but I just think that, that well, well that, that's the thing. Politics is about power, right? It's about is route. it? So, well, I mean, it's it's you will invariably end up leading a large group of people, More and right, yeah. and so the people, the people who also want power because whatever reason they need it for, whatever destructive reasons or uh, uh, for ego things or whatever uh, reasons of ego, the people who need that power, they will naturally gravitate towards Pollux because they will that's where they can get that they can fulfill that need for them that sick need and have power as opposed to somebody who says I'm democratically elected do you really, do you really think that, that there are persons who say well I don't know why but I feel the urge to just control people um, do you really think that some people want the power because the power and the money because it power seems to because it's a lot just, too I mean, in a theatrical sense, yes, that would be a nice way to put somebody, to frame somebody as a, well, as a villain or something like well, that. What, what but do you feel in real life, is it really that simple that somebody makes the conscious uh, decision, all right, I don't know why, but I feel the urge to just control people. Sure, a lot of people do. Look at really? Stalin. What, what did Stalin do? Stalin, he had, he had, he had Look, a over this I place. Think, I think it's a you puppet know? regime. I honestly think it was a puppet regime. Well, well, you know, Stalin... He, in, a way, in a way that... What, what he, do you do? He used, to, he used to tell people, he used to tell people, he said, I want to watch movies and everybody has to get drunk except for me because he wanted to watch them because so he, he'd still have control over his facilities, you know? Crazy stuff like that. And some of that stuff is, is uh, you know, almost sociopathic. Um, that, and so the people will be drawn towards that. Now, you have some people who say, I actually want to make a change for the better. I want to really change things for people and they're good at that you have Cory Booker in the States for example um, who actually is a good centrist guy you know I'm not going to go into the Elizabeth Warren thing because she's way too off in one end and that's completely unrealistic what she talks about she gets great applause lines but she's but but her stuff is not really um, workable you you'd need her in a coalition with somebody because some of her ideas are good and some of them are just way too way too left-wing um, do you, do you say it as in a, in a say in a way that to it that well real politics is just uh, something out of a consensus that's what politics is that's what, what democracy is a, is a, is a is a consensus hmm. you know hmm. uh, politics politics they call politics the art of the possible and and don't forget if you if you vote for one guy there was a free beer party in germany Okay, Trump. a guy who said, "If I get elected, I'm going to vote for free beer." Now imagine this guy had been elected Trump. in the House of Representatives in Germany. Let's say there's just for the sake of argument, there's there's a hundred people in there, hundred elected representatives. One guy's from the beer party. He puts forward a motion saying free beer for everybody. He votes for it. The other ninety nine vote against him. Then you have the people who voted for that guy saying, "Motherfucker lied." Politician. He said he'd have free beer. I voted for him. He got elected. Nothing happened. They don't understand that that is what democracy is. That they have a representative. You and know? then, and then you get those marketing dudes who say, "Well, no, people don't really function that way. They're just too 
the, their short term memory and all the memory in general is not that good mm. so but people don't really pay attention to that yeah mm, there was there was a there was a, a free beer with, I don't know what happened to him that's yeah. it well I mean that, that's that's if it's a one it's a one issue vote but I don't know if, I don't know if if you can reduce all, all, all politics and all and all democracy to do you to do that. you actually try to specifically talk about certain issues in certain regions in a way that you, that you, you feel the pulse. Um, not necessarily, unless somebody comes up with a lot of stuff. Like I notice a lot of people um, have certain. They're like there's some popular lines to talk about, like a like an anti globalization thing, anti GMO things, anti um, uh, you know the Chinese factory things. And I'm like, do you actually see what happens as a result? Anti nuclear energy stuff, and and a lot of it is based on misrepresentations and misinformation. I blame liberal media then. Uh, right? No, no. Why? Right, but uh, but they bring those topics up. Um, I think liberal media is a is a an invented term that doesn't that doesn't really I mean, you know describe what anything. I, you probably know what I mean. I mean, most most of the time when you see, let's say, what's the what's the f- most uh, famous comedy show? The, the Daily, Daily the show. Daily Show. Yeah. Right. They are being criticized for being just so liberal, in in their viewpoints that they sort of taint the the youth. What is it the um, correct word? I mean that that they just implant they try some, to be, they some try to be, idealistic yeah. thoughts in, in the youth. Well, the, they're big on social justice, uh, social justice things, and and, 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 and the critique and, is that they and, overdo it. Um, the critique is that it's, I don't know. My critique is that is that they're too focused on themselves. Um, I think actually the topics they talk about. Uh, I used to watch the Daily Show a lot. Well, I didn't agree with a lot of the stuff and Bill Maher and all those things. I, I watch them and I think. Uh, I definitely don't agree with a lot of the stuff they talk about, but I think they are important things. Um, I think, but I mean, you can only shine a spotlight on, you only have a certain amount of time, so you can only shine a spotlight on a certain thing. Sure. The thing I like about The Daily Show is they have a style and they will actually show people turning around um, and flip-flopping their, 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 their views based on, based on uh, who they're getting paid by. You know who's a funny uh, Canadian? Uh, I, I, I've heard the name, but I don't know anything of his. Yeah. Remember Russell Peters? Russell Peters. Russell Peters, fabulous. Is it a comedian? Yeah, Canadian, Canadian comedian. Look, very, he, very he, Canadian. Does he look like an Indian? Yes. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. I've seen him on the Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, okay, okay, fabulous guy, fabulous guy. Great work, great stuff. You mean uh, as a as a comedy writer? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, He's got I've, great I've, I've, I haven't seen anything of him. Oh, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get on YouTube for that for that guy. He's fabulous. He's fabulous. Really, really good. Compared to, let's say, what would you? Whom would you compare him to? Uh, like Canada's Bill Cosby, without but Bill Cosby is kind of a negative thing now. Uh, oh, but Bill Cosby was a real, real clean act, right? He, Russell Peters is clean, but he talks about he's still relevant. Talks about uh, so he's not a Louis C.K. or something like that. No, no, no. Uh, um, Louis C.K. I, 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 I appreciate. It. It's not always my kind of comedy, because I, um, I find some of it is, is just um, useless. Yeah, he goes over the 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 well, yeah, goes overboard. For, but for my taste, I like. I, I like know the, a lot of people like. I him, like man. Joe Rogan. Usually uh, says says like this. Do you remember the time when when you where all the comedians went, went just like? Have you ever noticed? <laughs> right, the, <laughs> right, yeah, all yeah. the all the stuff. But it seems to me that even today you see those the comedians where they just talk something that's almost entirely made up. Just but for just for the specific intent of getting a laugh, sure. Which seems to me, oh well, come on! And, well, and there's political uh, uh, comedians, and there's comedians who put on a show. Yeah, there's when some you make it ones, something ones, you know? uh, related to reality, then it becomes something of enhancing your Eddie cognition. Murphy used to do that. Eddie Murphy used to do that. He used to, he used to talk about his own situation. Uh, Richard Pryor, some of the you know. Old, I don't. I, wow. I don't get. I don't get why people say that he's probably the best comedian. Who? Uh, Richard Pryor. Richard, uh, I, Richard I, Pryor, it's very dated. And you have to, if you hear his old stuff, yeah, his old stuff was, I him was on, right. I tried to watch him on net, Netflix. Yeah. Then, I went, uh, then I just watched, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes and just, uh, this is nonsense. The, the, yeah, the, compared to today's comedy, um, Richard Pryor is, I guess it just isn't funny because he was talking about certain social issues yeah. which were really important at the time, which were really, which people were really needing to talk about at the time. Suppose and I'll he was bringing it up. And he uh, the connection between the black and the white but back then, the thing. and he did it in a in a real way, and he told stories, and he was not ashamed to tell stories about his addiction, his uh, his uh, um, yeah, that was his, his abuse. That's what I saw. I mean, you know? he talked about his personal yeah. life, which we, and he was the first person doing that, so that's why uh, it was very groundbreaking. I was all right, very so he's groundbreaking. groundbreaking in and and at the time, it w- and if you look, at, I mean, if you watch some of his movies, the guy the guy's also just got great delivery, you know, and and he's a he's a he's a great comedic actor as well, mm-hmm. uh, in that sense, as a comedian, he was 
was he was he was great. Um, but I speaking but speaking about historical acts, mm-hmm. I mean, I watched uh, some Bill Hicks material. Oh, the other fabulous! Day. Yeah, yeah, man, man it's love still, that guy because he literally tries to just push the envelope when it comes to real right, s- real right. stuff. Uh, he's, uh, he's, the he's cognitive he's aspect of life, social social critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. He has, he has a lot of a lot of a lot of social critical stuff and talks about money and politics and stuff like that and and marketing and stuff and and uh, uh, I love that guy. I, I love what he does. But then you get um, some like um, Drew Dice Clay. Probably not. Uh, okay, um, this guy made up a, uh, uh, an act that he's uh, he's like the cool guy from I don't know Jersey or New York or something like that, mm-hmm. um, and uh, he made up this character, and you never knew if he was made up or not. It took only years later, and well, he the swore cable guy a lot. Is the same, isn't it? Uh, I don't know the cable guy very well. That's that's something that was a little bit l- came a little bit later than when I was really in comedy. Mm. Um, Andrew Dice Clay had one album, which in my opinion is the best comedy album I've ever heard really um, yeah it's from I think 2000 face down ass up I'll note that you can actually stream that uh, face down face down ass up yeah, Andrew, sounds like a, a rap lyric um, yeah that's pretty much yeah a face down ass up from Andrew Dice Clay well yeah um, uh, the best album I've ever heard but it, it's a, it's very Good words, it's, strong it's, words it's very it's very street and, uh, and one of my best friends uh, a guy from California also he grew up a little bit a little bit street and get mm-hmm. um, not ghetto tough but ghetto like 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 um, poor mm-hmm. um, and he uh, and he relates to stuff on the album and and he also says that's the best album he's ever heard I have another friend from England who mm-hmm. grew up completely differently and he says I do not understand it at all he says there's nothing funny about it so taste well if English person says that yeah but I'm, an American I'm guy and a Canadian guy both of us listened to that, to that Andrew Dice Clay album and we said oh my goodness it is genius and we even even 10 years after after we listened to it toge- uh, uh, together um, we still uh, we still quote stuff from it we, d- we were talking just this week and we were still quoting stuff from it alright all right. yeah we, to, we, we do regularly so oh you know who is probably the best comedian in my book would be Jamie Foxx Huh, Jamie Foxx. Good, good stuff. Because yeah, yeah. that's just... Uh, that's See, if you would be musically and anthropologically one, uh, one top notch, right? He would be entertainment's top notch. Cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. Hmm? I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. I, I, I was into, into a lot of comedy for, for quite a while. I did a bit of stand-up. Yourself? Also. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Are you proud of it? Yeah, uh, I wish I could have taken it a bit further, but I couldn't because um, I realized that doing it in Germany was just too difficult f- because of the language and the little finesse in there. But the Germany has the, the, the uh, I remember on ProSieben, it was the comedy club, right? Yeah, but I didn't want to do it in German. I wanted to do it in English. Um, uh, the Germans no, have a different sense of humor than... Or sorry, German, sense, German humor has a different focus um, than the Canadian one that, I, that I'm more familiar with. And My guess would be Canadian humor is just more polite. Um, I don't know if you listen to that Andrew Dice Clay album. <laughs> I, don't know right, if, I don't know if yeah. you like that. I'll, I'll take a look. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of it's pretty hard, um, and he's been going in that hard and hard pornographic direction, and it's um, so hmm. he's, he's not clean at all. He's not well, clean at all. Well, you definitely have some some comedians who are not clean, mm-hmm. but also not necessarily funny, and then you have those who. Maybe are not that clean, but they yeah. they know the right places where they you don't where have to it's be appropriate. It gets the effect. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Right? But for example, I was never into Jerry Seinfeld. Never. Yeah, I, I don't never, understand that one at all. I, I understand why people like it, but I why? D- but Tell it, me. It, 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 Tell it, me. It, um, he would talk a lot about situations, and and make people reflect on situations. But, it, but isn't he the type of guy? Have you ever noticed? Um, yeah, yeah, he had a good way of doing it. And of course, his his TV show he reached he reached a lot of people. Although he was already doing pretty well before his TV show. Because remember, it was, I think it was on, uh, on Pro Pro Zeven, I think, uh, Jerry, the Seinfeld show was was okay. uh, some late night hour on Pro Zeven. Oh, I don't I don't watch TV. So I, I think I, I don't well remember. back in the night. I mean, oh, I didn't either. Right? And yeah. I and I watched it and I thought, what? Yeah. What is that? Other than Star Trek, I'd never really watched <laughs> watched any TV. Yeah. And Star then, Trek isn't TV. It's Star so, what Trek. do you think, for instance, the comedy of the Naked Gun? Uh, oh, Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was great. You remember the movie Airplane that he was he also he also did. Airplane. I probably know that one, but I'm not sure whether or not. Classic, classic, classic. 
Um, watch Airplane. I oh, think it's and, 1976. Uh, oh, and, and Mel Brooks movies as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mel Brooks, I, Mel Brooks was sometimes a, a, a bit too silly for me. Um, for my taste, anyways. Um, uh, it's, it's, I'm trying to think what else there might be. Uh, history. I remember it was, was, a, was a good Blazing Saddles. I thought was was okay. I see a lot of people enjoyed it. Mm. Um, I never really liked Monty Python. I don't know why. I've I've seen clips of it. I don't understand yeah. it, but I suppose it has some humor. Yeah, I didn't get it. I didn't get into it. Faulty Towers, however, you remember Faulty Towers? I also just seen some clips. Not that's, necessarily. That's yeah. that's that's quality stuff. That, that you know one, what that the really funniest good. British show was for me? Which the one? Ali G show. Oh wow, <laughs> yeah, he was great. Yeah, man, that yeah. was just it's a totally yeah. different level. Another Jewish guy. Did you know that when he made he made the uh, the movie? But how can you tell that he's a Jewish guy? Uh, well, his name is Sasha Baron Cohen. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. So also he's Jewish. He's he uh, and he speaks Hebrew uh, um, fluently. But how do you? I'm, Did you know when I he when he was, when do you he was have making a radar or something like that? Yeah, it's called a, it's, a, it's it's called the Judar. You can yeah. usually tell. My girlfriend always laughs how I walk down the street. I'm like, oh look, he's Jewish. Or oh, they're Israeli, and then we'll walk up to them and they'll be speaking Hebrew or something like that. Or I'll just talk and or she sees me going to somebody, and I'll be like, hey, start talking to them. I'll be like, you're Jewish, aren't you? And they'll be like, yeah. You too, yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, it's clear. And my girlfriend would be like, "Why? How do you know?" It's like, "Well, look at him." And I'll be like, "Yeah, look at him." And it's and she'd be like, "Look at what?" And I'm like, "Look at his Jewishness." And stuff like that. There's just certain things, you know. Um, yeah, but know. when it comes to the visuals, uh, I think many many countries in the Near East would be similar, and looks. Some of them, some of them. Also, some some of the mannerisms, some of the cultural things, mm-hmm. some of the looks sometimes in the situations where you might find people. Also, um, yeah, uh, you know, you know when you're dealing with an Israeli when you walk into him and he tells you to get the fuck out of the way, <laughs> like that. Are they rude? Uh, they're not known for being polite. Let's put it that way. Really? Um, there's the joke about uh, what is it? Uh, um, a Russian, an American, and an Israeli are walking down the street, and a man comes, steps in front of them, and says, "Excuse me." I'd like your opinion on the banana shortage. Mm. And the American says, uh, what's a shortage? And the Russian says, what's a banana? What's a banana? And the Israeli says, what's excuse me? Mm. I understand. (laughs) That says it all. Yeah. So. That's not, that's not a, that's not a good combination of being a Jew and being rude. Well, they're they're just, that's that's just bad PR. Well, in, in Israel, they're known for being very direct. Really? Oh, yeah, they're known for being extremely direct. And, uh, yeah, at the same time, they're very warm. They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're very nice people, and they'll help you, and there's still a you know, good sense of, of, uh, of yeah, a community there. Um, and, most, and mostly religious people? No, 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 just anybody, really. I remember if you see kids, you know, um, breaking shit or, 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 or just, just screwing around, people go up and say, hey, what are you doing? What's going on? Yep. North America, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't get involved. I know, oh, not you're my kids and, and not my problem. And maybe mm-hmm. you call the police or whatever, but there people walk over and start shit. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the kind of thing that, that you find uh, in Israel, you know, like you would in Africa, actually, you know, where the village raises the child, that kind of thing, which we don't have here in Europe anymore. Anymore, probably. Yeah. Probably. We had it, but, but it's, it's not that it's bad not anymore. To not have it. Um, because there are those types of situations, you still have a lot of s- stupid th- things happening. There's good and bad about it. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Uh, uh, because there's good and bad about it. I, I think that's one of the things, uh, again, me going on about Africa so much. Um, that's one of the things about Africa. You go there and, and you have people genuinely interested in you and genuinely wanting to talk because that's what everything's based on. It's based on people. And everything people, you know. When you go to Africa, I mean, um, you don't go there to do sightseeing unless you do the stupid safaris, you know. Yep. Um, but, I mean, like, if you go to whatever, Chad or, or Cameroon or whatever like that, or, you know, you don't go there to do sightseeing. I mean, what are you going to see? They don't, have, they don't have a big fancy building or this and that. They might have some nature stuff. Um, but I remember having a discussion with somebody in, uh, in uh, where was it? I think it was in Swaziland. And said, you know, we have that's all these in the south, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, inside South Africa, mm-hmm. um, and and said, you know, that's funny. Uh, when I told her that I'm originally from Africa and I was born in Africa from African parents. You mean you? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And she figured out, you know, okay, I have my African street street cred. Wow. And she goes, oh, you're African too. Yeah, yeah. You see these white people here before? She said, I don't understand. Um, so what are you here for? You, uh, you doing a safari? I was like, no way. I said, ah, you you get it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm not here to see that. She says, yeah. I don't understand why people would come here. You know, these white people, they pay so much money to come here and do safaris. Look at a fucking zebra. 
Oh man, that's a shame. What the if hell? The, but it, but that's a shame no. that they think so. Well, they say you know to them it's like an Cause, animal. Cause it's like it's like being here and saying, well, you people came here and, lo- and, and looked at a, a know, sounds, an animal, just a regular animal here. Yeah, yeah, because it, sound, it sounds because like they because it sounds like they derive some kind of pride in the fact that well, wow, it's just they just don't get it because it's, it's just not important to them. You know, it's like it's like I've had a lot of people tell me here in the Baltic country say, why are you coming to the Baltics? Why, why? you could actually go to like a nice place? I remember I remember um, I remember years ago um, one of my first trips to the Baltics, remember I was just stopped, every time I'd stop, I was here alone, and every time I'd meet people, they'd be like, so what are you doing here, are you, you here for work? I'd be like, no, I just, I came here to, to visit, and they're like, no, like, you came from where? Like, next door? I was like, no, no, I flew here, I'm going to spend a couple of weeks here, and then I'm going to go back, and they'd say, you mean you came here to the Baltics? As a tourist. i say, yeah, for tourism. And they said, there's nothing else you want to do here, nothing else, I said, no, no, just here to visit. And they'd be like, why? Why? You... Dude, it's all about uh, well, cheddar. <laughs> no, but no, but I mean, they they didn't see anything special in their own country. They said this place is shithole. I live in that. I can't wait to leave. What the fuck you coming here for? Yeah, how a lot of people will will see uh, something that they grew up with. So you know, we go to there and we're like, oh, zebras, giraffes, hippopotamus. Whoa, I'm going crazy, you know, and and uh, um, and for them, they're like. Oh yeah, they were saying people looking at a rhinoceros. It lies in its own shit. Why do people come here to look at a rhinoceros? So can you imagine people coming here and I, you know, I want to see a pig. Please take me to where there's a pig. I want to see a but pig. They do that. They do excursions to pig farms for sure. Well, not necessarily specifically I, I, pig farms, just farms. Can where you, you imagine a pig. Pig, pig safari if they set up a pig park here, so people, so, the, so, so, that, so, that, so that Chinese tourists can actually go and dude, go to pig dude, safaris. Dude, we have and here. Uh, you have a pig. This have, is where bacon. Bacon. Can you imagine? We that? have we have places where you can just go and look at rabbits, just regular plain old just bunnies. Yeah. And that's it. Well, and he, it here used to be the, and it used to be the case that in even in the 90s yeah many people since since there were well not necessarily 90s but still in the late 80s for instance since the, the shortage on meats and stuff like that yeah they used to raise uh, those i think it's rabbit right rabbit. no not rabbit it's the other one the because uh, the rabbit is on it uh, an ear is the one who's in the, yeah yeah a hair. rabbit is the, the one who can actually be raised easily yeah, right? Right, right yeah all right yeah, so yeah, yeah. The hair, so yeah. they so they they raise Sure. Right? Yeah, I've eaten them. Yeah, and nowadays the uh, rabbit meat is quite expensive, right? And people just laugh at it because they used to just eat it and, and get sick of it, right? And like, like lobster. And and yeah, probably. And then uh, nowadays you can just go to a rabbit farm and friend just, of, just look at rabbits. A friend of mine from the maritime countries from Nova Scotia, in Canada, mm-hmm. uh, told me about her grandmother. How her, gra- her grandmother, uh, sorry, grandfather. How when he was a kid and he went to school, he had to eat lobster sandwiches because yeah. they were so poor. Um, and he was so embarrassed that he had to eat lobster. He would hide at lunchtime to eat his lobster sandwiches so the other kids wouldn't be like ah and make fun yeah. because he was eating lobster because they were so poor because it was seen as an, a sea insect insect of those. Because it is know? man, it exactly. looks weird. Sure, well that's what shrimp are. Shrimp are uh, insects. You know. Oh, you've been so uh, so many places. Do you know why people at one point in time just say, "Hmm, I might just try to eat that thing." The way that if you would encounter some some of those fish uh, creatures, right, the first time, definitely the first thing w- you to your mind wouldn't be, "Hmm, I like, I would like to know how it tastes with garlic or something like that." That's, that's <laughs> yeah. not the case. Yeah. Well, if you ever want to know, just ask the French. Um. <laughs> So, well, we're the Chinese. Well, but, they but cook everything, you, and they but have, but have you figured and, out and very well too? At, at what point uh, culture just says, "Hmm, I need to try that." Um, uh, probably out of necessity. Look really? at how look look at how much really? food we do not eat anymore. Um, you know, in Germany they have what they call the ice bein, which is the the fat leg, which is all just all the fat, hmm? and in us picking that jelly. Yeah, and thing that's completely out of fashion now that nobody wants it's considered old people's food how many people now young people are going to say oh i want to eat some you know some good animal food and they're going to want like a you know a piece of of a bone the leg bone and suck out the marrow man when you talk like that i only imagine the the, the tv shows in germany because they because they because they made the Oh, sort of, they, 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 okay, sort yeah. of like the good side and schlecht side, but with a speak, <laughs> right, and, and delicatessen. Yeah. Right, yeah, man, that's sort of funny stuff. Yeah. Switching uh, Kalkov is much cheaper. That, that was, that was the... 
heard of quite, it. Quite funny. Yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, I mean, I, I people will eat things and then um, because that was what you had, what you had to do. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people are probably happy to leave behind some some old eating habits. And again, uh, all right. So you didn't spare any food items in a way. You you tried to maximize your food, right? Yeah. But you know, I mean, I mean, to get a lobster. What is sausage? It's it's using up every part of the animal. Sure, but you see, the, the difference is all right. Those you raise, right? But those you need to fish, you actually need to seek them out. Mm. It's not like you. I don't know. Well, I yeah. I mean, I mean, there's there, yeah. There's farming and there's just you need hunting. to go after yeah. them, right? And if if I would, well, I would be in that, that position. I was like, mm, no, I'm just raising a pig. I'm fine. Yeah. Well, I would go after a lobster or anything. Just just what what is the type of situation where I suppose where, it depends where, where what's, society what's just goes, easy, easiest to right, get. Let's go after that. Probably what's what's easiest to thing. get or uh, or uh, just what is people know how to get and what is easiest to get uh, from places. The sailors who went for the dodo birds when they arrived in in Mauritius, the reason that the, you know the dodo went extinct was mm. because it was eaten uh, by the sailors, also by the rats from the ship. That was a big thing because the rats and the dogs went and ate the eggs, and so mm. they couldn't. They lost all generations at once. Uh, or several, um, and then the population went like this. Yep. So, the, but the dodo birds, you know, they're like, hey, let's eat this. It's easy to catch. The thing just comes towards us and it's, oh, dodo, dodo, dodo. And then they just like that, you know, you have a bird, big fat bird full of meat coming towards you. Yep. So you're going to go for the dodo bird. And when that's gone, you're going to go for the next easiest thing, whatever that may be. And then just raise chickens. <laughs> dodo chickens. Yeah. Yeah, the dodo birds. Dead as a dodo. So. Do you have any concluding remarks when it comes to any travel you do? Let's say you <laughs> you have you've been in a place for I don't know a certain amount of time, and then you just conclude something about that place in a sense. All right, I close this chapter. Um, I suppose for the time because you pick up lessons. Sorry, I pick up lessons. That's what I get out of traveling. I notice certain things become less important to me, and then I'll perhaps take on other things. Now, I don't mean wearing my wearing a certain article of clothing or tie-dye or growing dreads or whatever. I mean, actually, uh, lessons, life lessons, ways of uh, looking at life, taking some things not as important or some things more important, you know, understanding the value of free time, for example, stuff like but that. But at this point, you, you probably know? don't have anything to learn anymore. Uh, I mean, I in, a sen- in, a, in a sense of the Pareto principle, I mean. I find that actually I do. I still have a lot of stuff that evolves. Right now, uh, one thing I, I'm, I'm noticing also the value of, actually the value of free time and what that does and luxury uh, the luxury of doing nothing or of doing less Um, uh, the 40 hour work week for example uh, why is it that hunters and gatherers um, used to do between 15 and 20 hours of now we're doing 40 to survive to get by what's going on where is that extra work going into and what does it cost us I'm not anti-capitalist not in the least bit um, but I wonder where those extra 20 to 25 hours a week are going if we only need 15 to 20 to survive. We we'll probably need nowadays. Um, I don't know. Um, some people, maybe it's because if you want a shirt with a horse on it, that'll cost you another an extra three, four hours of work a week. If you want a certain standard and th- certain things like that, some things we also pay into society in our taxes so that we can build roads and hospitals and public things, and so we have to pay those taxes, and maybe that's a couple extra hours that we'll work for the community. Oh. I really don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Um, I don't. I'm not saying there's an evil thing there or investor classes or whatever. Um, uh, you know, I'm the investor class also, uh, looking that way. But I mean, I, I worked for the money that I invested. Um, so I don't know where that comes from. I really don't know where it comes from. And I. I but I was seeking. Um, not necessarily, right? Not. I'm not really working very hard on it at the moment. But it's something that I that I that I look at. For example. Um, with uh, uh, the conclusions for you are already there, right? I mean, it's not like it's not like yeah, you are okay, going. Well, I have one final conclusion about everything. Life is pointless because you die, and it doesn't matter. And when everybody dies who's known you, and there's no any but nobody alive left who's known a certain person, mm-hmm. then that person's life just becomes a couple of lines. But you still were were a blip in in the time. Of you, you were before, but you're not anymore. Still, and that's you, you, uh, that also ties into chi- uh, the, the space time continuum, or what's it called? Yeah, but is that going to matter? Uh, we're in the middle oh, right now. We're in the middle of our sure. of the of the life of the sun right now. Yeah, the sun is it has a lifetime of roughly six to seven billion years, and we're right now at about three and a half billion years. 
So the evolution, the first. Let's let, let's just be you know, correct. On, it's probably just an estimation. Um, I mean, how to, how precise can you be when you talk about those kinds of things? Um, I'll, I'll go with people who know more than I do about that, because um, uh, although I did study science, um, and uh, I still I think I thought science was a study. I, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, what I mean, is studying. Uh, no, no. I, I I studied. I well, my 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 degree and my all my other things I, I have from university were all in sciences and so i i'm i'm, I'm used to uh understanding how some of the people reach their conclusions and the science science scientific method and stuff like that mm -hmm. and that's why i'm very pro knowledge and stuff like that and pro um uh, thorough about about what you do know and what you don't know and when and making a very uh, differentiating between things we suppose and things we assume mm -hmm. Um, you know, between what we know, what we can't know, for example. So therefore, um, uh, you know, by what we know right now, and I mean, there's a lot of good cosmology um, uh, research uh, that's been done, you know, stars, life of stars, and our star is not as a particularly special star. We, we just happen, that happens to be the one that we live around. Um, and we're roughly halfway through that. Um, and if you think about what happens when that star is going to supernova, is it still go supernova, obliterate everything on the Earth, um, life is pointless. Our whole society is pointless. If you think about the stability that we have now, that we've had since the second world, since the end, of the end of the Second World War, another war is going to come, and everything you have built up, everything you may have, the building, and you may whatever all the wealth you've, you've gathered, you won't be able to inherit it. Your ch children won't inherit it, like like the stuff has now been in, for a lot of people in Syria. Didn't you leave you know? out the communication? Because the communication is not the same. Um, the problems, a lot of the problems, though, of uh, which are human nature, which are which because we're animals. Human nature when they are ignorant. Um, but uh, ignorance but is a big factor but of it still human means nature. Sure, don't learn a lot of these lessons. But look, if you have uh, the possibility of looking at cute kitten videos in Syria, <laughs> you'll be less inclined to war. Uh, it's just a fact, man. If you don't have, if you sorry, don't have a, but that's a fact. But if you don't, if you don't have a job and you don't have a, you know, you don't have certain means and your your family's hungry, you're still going uh, to see some cat videos. <laughs> but you, but you that's you becoming a, next to bread a necessity. <laughs> cat videos. I'm gonna. I, I hope though. I hope cat videos becomes a necessity. That'd be very cool. Do you know the meow mix commercial? I think I do. I think I've heard that. I've heard that on Malcolm in the Middle. Really? That was a that was a an advertisement. If you want to see really the oh, it was a true advertisement. It was a true advertisement in the eighties. Oh, because because in the because in the Malcolm in the Middle episode, it was just that Malcolm got really depressed. Then he wanted to compose a song. Then he performed the song, and then his smaller brother says. Meow, 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 because if he finished the song, he didn't let the Malcolm finish the sentence, because he, meow, 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 and then the Malcolm, Malcolm went, what are you doing? No, 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 meow, 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 right? It's the song, it's the song. Watch the video on YouTube. All right, right, it's the song. Watch the video on YouTube, Meow Meow Mix commercial. Ah, I didn't know that's the real thing. That was a commercial from the 80s. Oh. It's it's legendary in North America. All right. For my generation. <laughs> and then, yeah. and it's it's something uh, I I've, I've played it for lots of kids, and the kids just they, when they see the video, they're just like, whoa! It's it's a cat, a very high cat voice, and it's, and mm -hmm. it's, it's really fabulous. Somebody actually sang it. It's not even uh, um, like like digitally done. Yeah. It was in the eighties where somebody had to sing it, <laughs> so you can cool. hear the person taking a breath and everything, and ah. and uh, it's 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 uh, but it was it was it was one of the things where so it yeah, was real. But that's the difference, right? I mean, nowadays we are able to actually sit here. And I and you could actually suggest uh, for me to look at a commercial that was aired when I wasn't even uh, around, right? Yeah. You couldn't you couldn't be able to do that in the sixties. We have a lot of possibil possibilities. We have See? a lot of opportunities that we didn't have. Absolutely. So th that's that's why I think no okay. World War Three is po even remotely possible. I hope not. I hope that pe people physically. Well, I think a lot of people forget the lessons if you cut and the, forget how things were after. If you cut the internet cord, ooh, that's bad. World War Three. That, that, yeah, then the first that's how you said that would be World War Three point five. That's gonna be. That's that, gonna that, be. Will, that will be the modern day Franz Fer Ferdinand. Then <laughs> the, that's for sure. That is on. Got my internet connection. Yeah, that's not on. <laughs> I can't let that stand. <laughs> that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, these uh, these uh, um, uh, I I don't know. Oh, don't get me started on, on more politics. We'll be here even longer. You're as I said, man. You're one of those dudes who it's it's so interesting. There's no <laughs> there's no telling where where would be the right way to stop or the right place to stop. So suppose. Uh, now it's actually midnight. 
we might as well just leave it at that just to go to sleep because in a way it's the only only place I, I i could imagine being appropriate in a way all right maybe we should get some sleep <laughs> that's it i'm enjoying this I'm yeah enjoying i'm this definitely pack. enjoying this i mean you are uh look i've met even even not just through airbnb but also couch surfing and just uh, being let's say for instance my father is a real estate evaluator so we've been to i don't know how many hundreds of people homes and met people in general yeah yeah man it's it's just that maybe a percent or a fraction of a percentile of society gets to do things that are not necessarily extraordinary but out of the ordinary yeah. in a way so i mean the thing is first you have to know they're out there secondly you have to want to do it because a lot of people they want security and they will have security in doing familiar things staying in their village for example staying in their country not going out and and experiencing other things because it takes a little bit of personal and that's, push, what, I'm, that's what i'm guessing you know? that you the guys like you would need to be world world teachers i don't know yeah just world but rulers I mean, but but to to, to, oh, to expand that point that, a little that's, bit that's a funny thought i would yeah. ima- i would like to know whether or not for instance you becoming a, a total world dictator right and then you just turn rogue right <laughs> that would be the most funny thing uh, <laughs> when you start killing people perhaps uh, except yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one little point <laughs> yeah because that because because you've probably heard of the sentence right uh uh, power corrupts and absolute, absolute power. power corrupts absolutely yeah. yeah and i would i would like to know whether or not it's true for you i don't know i because that would be fun if i was a hell. dictator if i was the, as the uh, minister of information and i'd have you right I'd, on. I'd have you distribute cat videos to every school right on <laughs> right on mandatory cat videos that'd be cool, that'd be cool. that would be that would be the equivalent to north korean hymn singing or something like that yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, just yeah, watching yeah. Meow, 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 meow. that's cool you gotta, you gotta check that out you really have to check that out that's yeah fa- that's fabulous. easily, easily. All right, we are two hours, 40 minutes in. All right. That was, I would definitely be ready to do a 10-hour podcast with you. That's for sure. All right. Not, not even ex- exaggerating. But yeah, man. I suppose, I suppose there will be a 21st time you are visiting uh, Riga, perhaps. There will be. So, yeah, we might just continue. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. That's a plan. Just this and...